1027 WNEW, the latest from Tool, Anthony. Yes, Tool. Chisholm. From Ladder Alice. The CD comes out, what, tomorrow, right, Ben? Yes. Can't wait. We got our copies in the office. We've been cranking the whole CD all day yeah. long today. And, of course, they're playing uh, this coming Sunday night. A bunch of us from uh, the show going to see Tool. Tool. Rock. I think we got some copies of the latest Tool CD. Courtesy of Volcano Entertainment. Yeah. Ladder Alice will be available in stores tomorrow, but we got five copies right now. Awesome. <laughs> five random callers get Tool CDs. 212-757. 1027. Yeah. What? Sorry, I was off mic, so I had to yell like an idiot. They're telling me. The L&A Show, 212-757-1027. Look who's in the studio to say hi real fast, Anthony, because Ronnie's got to go get his uh, root canal done. I'll get my canal done. Ouch. That We're hurts. running fast in for opening, Anthony. <laughs> We're on a wild road trip, boss. <laughs> hey, we're coming into Paramus any minute now. <laughs> yeah, we want to uh, recap our, our cluster F that was called the... The, uh, I, what, what did we call that mess? The yeah, Wow the, uh, Wow uh, Cluster. Road trip. The, the yeah, Wow Road Trip. The yeah, Wow Caravan. Yeah. Whatever you wanted to call it. We called it a mess. <laughs> uh, you know, having done it, I think there are a few things. You know, you, you need a shakedown, Brian. Right? Yeah, That's yeah, what it was. Sure. You shake it down. You, you then look at everything, analyze it, find the pros and cons, the pluses and the minuses of the whole thing. And then you, uh, you do it again maybe someday. Uh, with the changes in place that might make it a better event. We put it on the lathe now. Now we put it on the lathe. On the lathe. Said, on the lathe. Move it. Polish it out. Move this some Move the edges. Yeah. I mean, each time you get it until you're ready to put the, the fine sandpaper on it. I think it would work better if you guys did not leave the studio and just did the whole thing. <laughs> that's uh, that's a good man. idea. We'll write that down. You take know, that into consideration. You know what? You guys got it made on paper. Look like a good idea. It seemed huh? like, it seemed like a good yeah. blueprint. It seemed right. like it was going to fly. You guys... But, uh, Ronnie, Ronnie was funny in the back office. He's like, yeah. you guys were at from the beginning. Right. I mean, you were yeah. supposed to be at City Hall at 1240 on Friday. <laughs> you guys didn't even leave the building until 1240, so you were playing catch-up the whole right. afternoon. It's an hour later, and we're in Times Square still. Just we, we knew our schedule was just shot. You're not stopping for people. You're just uh, like the movie Speed. It's <laughs> right. like, yeah, we can't slow down under 50. <laughs> it had blown up. So we were throwing stickers out the window. Uh, but the fl a few places we did stop. Unbelievable yeah, right. response yeah, great time. from oh. the crowd. My God. Here's, uh, you know, just from a tactical point of view, guys. All right. Better phones. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Turn your radio down. Now, you don't <laughs> yeah. know. You've never been on that side of it before. <laughs> I know <laughs> you're long-time <laughs> listeners, but first-time right. callers. Exactly. But you should know that. You know, that's, that's funny to say that because we'd bitch and complain all the time. And you're right. We had the stereo cranked in that bus. Yeah. And Ant's yelling the F word at us, <laughs> dropping the F bomb. Uh, did I? Yeah, we did. Remember, we did a little silent game to you guys. All oh, right, yeah. Out. Well, that's the only way to fight the, the silent way, game. The only way to beat it. I know how to beat the silent game. We, yeah, that that that's silent. We dropped the F bomb. Oh, Maybe also um, two kegs of beer in the back of the bus. Right, Maybe only one problem. next time. Now, a couple of times we thought you guys were doing a silent game to us, but the phones just crapped out. Yeah. yeah. And I'm looking over. I'm like, right. damn it. So, okay. Okay. Anthony. No, don't do this to us. Now. Gone. I know. Yeah. We were just gone. Yeah. But uh, uh, I, I think it, uh, it's still, uh, uh, when you look at everything, I think uh, we had fun. Yeah. How the uh, the Velvet Mafia, the bosses, handled this whole thing? I know they were, on, they were out hanging with the bad boys. We, we had a couple of people there. We had um, Jeremy right, who joined right. us for a little while, and then he left. Yeah. yeah. He just disappeared off the bus. Sure. Like the poor kid that got left behind at the field trip. Right. He just left them. He's still wandering around the mall. Yeah. we got to find him a girl. You think so? <laughs> yeah. All right. You gotta find him somebody. That might help. Yeah. Sure. Good luck. The, uh, <laughs> what, are you, what, are you, what are you saying, Opie? Well, I'm just saying good luck. He's too busy running right. the station. That's right. Not, yeah. Say. He's busy. Very He's good. married to his work. Right. Right. True. Just right. like Fezzy. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah. Well, my work's named Bill. <laughs> Fez has that fiance. <laughs> yes. In right. Niagara Falls, Ontario, Canada. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> 
She does keep several clothes at my place, though. Right. Also, <laughs> also, has a, also has a size 42 waist. <laughs> Relationships are based on what you have in common. Sometimes, right? Waist size. Sometimes Faz will go out shop before he try on the dress himself. <laughs> <laughs> Wear it around for a while because he misses her. Right. He misses her. Whatever works to get you through. Hey, uh, Faz, uh, any thoughts on Michael Stipe coming out of the uh, closet finally? Who knew? What a shock. Who knew? That was a shock. That was a shock. When I read it in the paper today, I'm like, about time. Right. I read it in the paper, and I'm like, that Michael Stipe? Because I'm thinking another Michael Stipe that I might not have known. Right. I'm like, Ari and Michael yeah, Stipe? Because never. it just freaked me out to the point I, I, could, I still don't believe it. Well, it, it's, it's there, too. It's Topsy Turvy. Next right. thing yeah. you're going to know, Richard Simmons is gay. <laughs> yeah. Well, the second he announces it. He hasn't announced it, has he? No, he's no, not no, come out of the no, closet. No, I don't blame no, him. No, Keep no. him guessing. That's the yeah. that's our motto. <laughs> <laughs> that's our motto on the Ron and Perry show. Keep him guessing. Keep him guessing. <laughs> I always wonder. And literally, every salesperson in this place goes, uh, Fez, is he, uh, and I go, what? Is he what? Funny? Yes. Yes, he is. No, I'm just saying, uh, you know, is he a little, he, uh, you know, is he, uh, no, no, what do you say? What exactly are you saying? What do they say? Nothing. Nothing. No. Does. People just, I don't know, they're, they're just protecting you. Someone's going to get a size 12 pump right up against the head. Right. People could These be, rumors don't stop. People can be mean. Fast. People are cruel. Yeah. Kids can be cruel. Yeah, yeah. they can. Especially around this playground. <laughs> yeah. Thank God you have thick skin. Fast. Right. Yeah. Because yeah. uh, I don't know if you ah. can handle right. what <laughs> it's said about you when you're not around. Anyway, guys, thanks so much. Oh, thank you for standing in. Root but Canal, we'll do this. Huh? Oh, let's First do this one again. ever? No. No, you have to. Cool. We're going on the Root Canal road trip. Right. Uh, <laughs> You're going to do that? We'll call in. You're taking Fezzy for your no, Root Canal? No, no. I got a Chris different kind of Root. I got a Chris different canal. Yeah, I got, <laughs> hey, 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 hey. <laughs> I got crystal meth teeth. I've been through everything. Oh, really? Crystal meth teeth. Who knew? Also, who knew that? Yeah. Well, I thought we could snort and snort and snort and everything would be fine, but... Those teeth will dissolve into a chocolate bar. <laughs> yeah. so I figured uh, right. it, it would be your nose or something. Right. Anything but the teeth. You know, How does it affect the teeth? It just he, they start he, to get soft. Yeah, because he, he, I can't have he grinded his teeth down when you're like... Right, just in the back. Yeah, remember, right. the best part, yeah. when they take that little thing and, and twist it in like a screw and then... Yeah. Oh, under a file. Pull the root out, and you feel it coming out. And like, yeah. and it just pops right out of it. <laughs> well, I already told him. I said I'll be using the N word, and I just don't really? take it personal yet. <laughs> no, Novocaine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. right. Novocaine. Yeah. Right. Novocaine. So yeah. Uh, let me uh, talk to Tony real fast. Tony, what's up? Guys. Yeah. Friday. Yeah. It was a worst show. Yeah. It was to a listener. I mean, you guys may have had fun in the bus and all, yeah. but the show sounded like crap. Maybe you should yes. get back. Tony, we we just wanted to take a day off. No, I understand that. You guys you guys rule. I, I you know, we, I love listening to you guys, but we take, I couldn't hear we I couldn't hear anything. All you heard was like bad cell phones and stinky screaming and Yeah. We we uh, and, and just yelling and, and, and Opie, you I couldn't hear you, I couldn't hear anything. We figured a way to play hooky from our radio show Friday. Well you did a good job. I mean, I'm proud of you guys. You guys, you know, you guys pulled it off really well. It's just that you know that so to us it sounded like Whoa, whoa, whoa. All right, Tony. I'm not, I'm not gonna say it. No, 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 you can say we sucked. I don't care, but I am cutting you no, off. You didn't suck, the show sucked. Well, it's our show, so we suck. <laughs> so I guess you do suck. All right, Tony, thank you. Uh, All right, guys, take it uh, easy. I think that you guys are at the point in your career now, it's time, time to start crapping on the people who got you where you are. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <what they're laughs> You know, you start to do like Elvis, you show up for 45 minutes, you slide okay. and you leave. Yeah. Right. We are at the point in our career where we could call in a show every right. once in a while, just kind of blow it off. You know? <laughs> right. That, I, that, what that guy doesn't quite understand is this was done to get out and uh, have some uh, beers and hand out some stickers with people. We, we just didn't. We, we could have done it and gone, we're taking the day off and we're going out and right. doing this. We met easily 20,000 of our listeners. It was huge. Easily. And we could have done it that way by just taking the day off and going out and then uh, having a best of or something. But we decided to try to, you know, let you in on what's going on. And, and it sounded like a cluster F. You know why? Because it was a cluster F. So if you think of the show sounded bad, muffled, bad cell phones, I'm yelling, Stinky's wooing, can't hear Opie. That was everything that was going on. I blame uh, Ron and Fess for sure. uh, blowing what did you? Yeah, you, you left we us. Screwed you wrecked the show. You left us a technically. Yeah, Te yeah, we did leave you for. Yeah, you, if you guys would have stayed till seven, then that would have been yeah. perfect. It would have been gone down as one of our greatest uh, radio promotions ever. But hey, way well, to go, Fuzz. Yeah, screwed it up. Thanks. I screwed it up. But uh, all right, drunk live reads. Why? Because we were doing live reads drunk. <laughs> you know, it's not nothing that 
That's just what it is. We let you in on the inside. I thought there was some um, entertainment value to that show. Sure. Right. I thought so. Whatever. It works. If you don't like it, whatever. Right. The next one will be better. Right. right. Next one will be Friday. Friday? <laughs> this coming Friday. <laughs> All right. Uh, but I want to thank Ron and Phil. Uh, they killed for us, Ron. Yes. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Tim. i got to go now, too. We, we do right, love these guys. Make sure you listen to yeah. them uh, noon to three before us, of course. There's a reason why we like Ron and Fest. And even if you don't listen to us, just tell people that you do. Yeah. yeah. Hey, someone asked. That's all nice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I love those guys. Yeah. That's all nice. You're going to get the gas? Do you get the uh, nitrous? Um, yeah. You get that? Now, too? This thing will be just. Will there be uh, Dan Mason or someone nearby to make sure you don't blurt out any CBS secrets no. under uh, anesthesia? No. I'm gonna have okay. the I'm gonna have the gas on the uh, on the train. On the train on the way it's there. It's a personal thing. I carry a tank with me. <laughs> Very good. Start an IV early. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thanks, Howard. Thanks, guys. There they go. Run okay. it fast. There they go. Hopping on the. Uh, no, Fez, you better leave too. Hopping on the raft, <laughs> paddling back. You need a chaperone for the reef. <laughs> There he goes, right at that. What a pisser. That was fun. That really was a lot of fun for Roddick. Yeah. What I was going to say, there's a reason why uh, we like Ron Affairs. First mm -hmm. of all, very talented. Yes. Very good radio show. And very different sounding than us. Right. Which is very important if you're trying to, you know, build a radio station like we're trying to build around here. Yeah, the shows have to sound different, have uh, personalities of their own, have their own bits and whatnot, and not overlap with us. So, that's all. That's all we're trying to say. And Ron and Fez definitely um, do that. You could do the same stories. You know, you can't make up new news by 3 o'clock. But the way you handle certain stories, certain teeth, just be an original spin on it with the way you uh, handle them. They have a very different, That's all very different style than us. Right. Opie? Yes, Anthony? So uh, I just got to quickly say hi to a couple of brand new friends of mine oh, oh. from Bay Ridge Nissan. Oh, oh. Yes, as you know, oh, like, as you know, Anthony's lease is up. Looks like uh, you'll be driving a Nissan in the very near future. Ah, oh, oh. ah, ah. Call Val me. Val and Mike down at uh, Bay Ridge Nissan. Thank you. Call me Kreskin. You, you are. You, uh, you're a mind. You read my mind. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, so uh, they're very courteous and cordial. And, uh, yeah, looks like I'm going to be in a, a new vehicle. Right on. So take the APB off of the Mercury. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to Chamberlain. Chamberlain, what's going on? Hey, what's happening, guys? Hey. You know, the guys, uh, these guys calling in saying the show sucked and whatnot. You had a sound quality problem. There's nobody else out there, though, going out to meet their listeners. I mean, 20,000 people, you guys are hitting the streets. Who else is doing that? Well, because we really care about you guys. I know, and, we're, and you know something? It's a little selfish, too. We were having a pisser, is what it was. <laughs> you know what? It's not work to go out and hang with you guys. We end up having a ball. Yo, that yeah. sounds good to me. I'd like to get paid in with drive. <laughs> I like that S word. Oh. S face. S face. Or just face. All right. <laughs> well, thank you, Chamberlain. Have a good one, guys. Uh, we got some pictures from the uh, the WOW road trip on WNEW.com. Soundrymusic.com, opianthony.com, I believe. Yeah, you know, uh, they're all over the place. So. And uh, one of the uh, other heroes of uh, Friday, uh, Norton. Jim Goddamn Norton? Jim Norton was so funny with uh, the, the call-ins. And then when we got to the Dublin pub, oh my God. I, I can't even tell you what was going on there with Norton. You could, you could say. Um, you want to give him a chance to say it? Uh, yeah, if he's around, sure. I'll, I'll tell you this, he pointed to something that was floating in the keg ice, and all he said is, she didn't swallow. And that, let's just put it this way, it wasn't a jellyfish. <laughs> no, <laughs> it wasn't a jellyfish. <laughs> wow. Oh. I, I was on uh, Brother, Brother Weezer's show Saturday night, and yeah. I talked about this a little bit, you probably weren't listening, so I'll tell you again. I saw Norton's hog at the, the Dublin pub. Ah, and... I guess I'm his friend now because I never understood why all his friends would say, "Yeah, I've seen Norton's hog," and they oh. and, and they said it like it's no big deal. Yeah, I'm at the bar at Dublin Pub in New Hyde Park. Yeah, some some sick f was buying shots like crazy over there. Tell me about it. And I turn, I turn with my shot, and Norton's kind of with a group of us, and he's laughing like a out of like a little schoolgirl. Yeah, uncontrollably, right? I look down, and he's just standing there with his junk just hanging out. What was wrong with him? For everyone to see. It was hilarious. Why would he do that? Because he's out of his effing mind, is why. He's standing with his hog out. Just, but, but what he does is he was like this, right? 
Yeah. And he was just seeing how long it took for someone to notice that he has his junk just hanging out of his zipper. Oh, my God. I was laughing so effing hard. And then other people caught on. They started screaming. He's, he's out of control, man. Can we get him on the show today? Yeah, see if he's around. Yeah, because we got to see uh, what he, you know, <laughs> what uh, what he thought of the whole mess. Fat Rob, what's up? Hey guys, what's up? first off, Ron Fez did a great job, and so did you guys. Yeah, oh, definitely, Ron Fez. Uh, really I met with you guys out. at the uh, Dublin pub. I happened to bump in the stinky. I asked him if he wanted to go burn one. Oh yeah. So, so we did. Oh cool. That kid's a piss, of man. Thank you. At one right. point, Nassau County cops were driving by, and he drops the bowl out of the window. He goes, Oh no. Times out the window. I said, "All right, man, it's cool." All right. Thanks, Don't worry. Uh, all right. Stinky's really happy today because we went for coffee. Yeah. And um, we're walking back to the station, and this Ben, she was pretty hot, right? Yeah. P pretty hot girl on the corner uh, just looks at Stinky and goes, "Do I know you?" And she's like, just <laughs> looking all confused at Stinky. And Stinky, had, you don't, you didn't know really what to say. Nothing. Because she was like standing at, just standing at the corner, nodding her head. Yeah. To everybody. Yeah. But she looks at Stinky. Do I know you? <laughs> so I, so I turn to the girl and, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> the bus looks like a crime scene. Oh, all right. Let's talk about the bus in a second. So, so I go to the girl. I go, that, yeah, that's Stinky from the Opie and Anthony show. And she goes, oh, that's how I know you. <laughs> but she didn't know you. No, no. You're telling her he's Stinky from the Opie and Anthony show. She knows Stinky doesn't know you were telling her that. No, that's all right. It's a strange thing. And then she's like jumping up and down. She was all happy. Like, oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> who who unloaded the bus when it came back here? I know. Here's, here's the deal. The bus finally pulls up after the ride from the Dublin pub back to here, where I think the brunt of the last push of alcohol abuse was done. I heard it got ugly. Well, I, I, I got off the bus. I left you guys after the Dublin pub. You left the Dublin pub because you're going out to Long Island, right. and you I'm had a ride home. back home. You're, you're home. I'm home. We, we're coming back to the station. I swear to God, more was consumed on that ride than everything else. It was the last great push. And uh, we finally pull up to the station. We look around the bus. It's a crime scene. It looked like it had been ransacked in a movie looking for microfilm. You know what I mean? Just uh, ransacked. And uh, it looked like the Voyeur bus, after the Voyeur bus was pulled over, and they had to tear it apart to, to look yeah. for Psycho Mark's weed. So we're getting off the bus, and I hear someone say something from the bus like, hey, who's going to do And me, Stinky, and Ben are just like, oh, come on, keep walking. Don't turn around. Don't turn around, man. Don't turn around. So who had to clean that up? Who knows? Anyone? Steve? Steve? Steve, you want to clean it up? Did you have to take the kegs off and everything? Well, I made my getaway with you guys. Yeah. And almost was scot-free, and then I was about to leave, and Dan, the promotions guy, went, come on, man, you got to help me. He oh. called me as I was walking out the door, and he just looked at me, and I said, oh, Jesus. Oh, he said, you got All stuck. Right. I said, I'm still on the clock. Screw it. We were just leaving Dan holding the whole bag yeah. as far as, like, taking care of, taking everything off the bus. So I think it was me, Dan, and Earl that wound up unloading the well, That was the only reason why we brought them. Oh. To clean up our mess after we were done. Oh, <laughs> It did. I was joking when I said it was going to look like the bus in the gauntlet. No, actually, we, we uh, brought him along for his sparkling personality. Oh. Jesus. Whoa, what happened? Give me cricket. Two minutes. Two minutes. <laughs> hey, uh, have we heard from the bus company? Are they happy with us? Are they sad with us? How could you be happy with that? That's what I want to know. The, the bus. bus rocked. Yeah, but it looks that bus looks like the type of bus that uh, you know you do a bachelor thing. Uh, they're probably used to so it. I'm hoping they're used to the, you know yeah. everything they found on there, including the jellyfish floating in the <laughs> in the keg water. Yeah. <laughs> also, you missed the slam dancing on the way home. Where yeah, what the hell was going on there? Slam Nirvana's Nirvana. blasting, and, and you and Stinky are slam dancing in the aisles. <laughs> woo! Woo! <laughs> I, I think we blew out the amp like three times. <laughs> <laughs> no. They cranked the stereo up so loud you couldn't even talk. Like me and Steve at one point are sitting in the uh, seats just talking, and I swear to God, we're, you know, foot away from each other trying to hear what each other's saying. The stereo gets cranked up louder. I'm just like, I, I, I and I had to mouth it out. I can't hear you, Steve. <laughs> we're a foot away from each other on a bus. And it's like real loud, so then we just decided to scream at the top of our lungs the song again with everybody else. Oh, that's right. Beer is flying. Like, all of a sudden, you just get hit with wetness. And you're like, what? And it's beer. And Ben's just flinging it. He goes, ah, oh, shut up. I'm fine. Yeah, exactly. And Ant and I are talking to each other. Next thing you know, there's a, just a 
spray shower of beer, and it's Ben beer. throwing beer on Like, Ben, me. relax with the beer. Ah, shut the F up, you pussy. <laughs> it's just a little beer. It's not going to hurt, you faggot. And Billy, the belligerent bed. Uh, the belligerent bed is the best. And Billy Mack on the floor. Was oh, the on the Billy Mack. It was my, what is my car? <laughs> Did he ever find his car? No idea. I left him in Manhattan. He was hammered. Didn't right. he leave his car in Brooklyn yeah. somewhere? <laughs> he left it at the bean post in Brooklyn. And at that point, I thought I was going uh, back to Brooklyn. So I'm like, yeah, I'll give you a ride. But I wasn't. And we got back here, and I, I didn't even see him on the bus on the way home. No. Was he on the floor? Holy Jesus, I thought he got off. He had the tap in his mouth. <laughs> He's out of control. Classic. Let's go to Zach. Zach, what's up? Hey, guys, what's going on? I just want to let you guys know we had the same driver that you guys had on uh, Friday. We were on a bachelor party on Saturday. The guy's name was Frank. Frank. Yeah. He yeah. loved you guys. Oh, yeah? Couldn't get enough of you. Oh, cool. Yeah, we were talking about it for about an hour straight. He said uh, he just had a blast driving you guys around. It was a lot of and, fun. And, uh, of course, I... I don't think he knew anything about any uh, jellyfish floating in any keg ice. But uh, oh, wow. other than that, he said you guys were awesome. All right, cool. Thanks, Zach. I think they're happy with you. Speaking of which, Frank is on the line. Let's talk to Frank. Hey, Frank. Yeah, what's up, guys? Hey, there you are. Yeah, I knew about what was floating in the keg. I heard that. <laughs> oh, all right. Uh, is, I knew about this is, that. This is our limo driver from Friday. Bus limo driver. It wasn't a bus. It was a luxury limo bus yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, that's what it was. Frank, I, I, I hope you had fun. I had a blast. I can't wait to do it again, guys. Nice. Well, next time we do it, we're going to, like, organize much better. We're going to maybe just stay in Jersey for the afternoon mm -hmm. and then... Then north of the city one afternoon and then Long Island for another afternoon. Yeah, that's great. Instead of trying to go to 12 different places during rush hour traffic. How stupid are we? <laughs> I know. Well, yeah. well Frank, we're going to send out a really nice uh, care package to you, all right? All right. My son said something about WWF, if you could do something for that. Yeah, hold on. Ben will talk to you, all right? All right. Thanks a lot. Thanks for helping us out, Friday. Hey, no problem. Anytime. Right Coachman on. Limousine, remember. All right. Take care. Coachman Limousine, right? And they have a website? I got the, the website. Uh, Eric. Hey, guys. What's up? I was waiting in Yonkers on Friday. Yeah, we got to kind of uh, discuss the Yonkers yeah, situation. Was, uh, the, the email, seven of us, the, the, email seven before, the email before the show today was ugly. But you got you guys what you guys got to understand. We just ran out of time. We Let me tell you what time we got back here. We got back here at about a quarter to eleven, and we left here at eleven o'clock in the. In the morning. Our, goal, 12, our yeah. goal was to get back here by 7 o'clock, so we're four hours late. No, and, and that's without... And that's with, hold on, hold on. And that's with uh, blowing off Yonkers and Flushing. We had yeah. to blow off two areas. Oh, the big problem I had was with Black Girl uh -huh. on the phone when we called up. He was like, F you, F this. You know, it was like, you know, we're waiting out there. I mean, there was like 15 of us at the time. I mean, I understand, but... yeah. Yeah. All right, I'm sorry. We'll, we'll yeah, get up to Yonkers soon, though, Eric. All right, I appreciate it, man. All right. Oh. All right. We'll have more stories to tell. Oh, yeah. That's we got, we sure. got a lot going on today. We have so to much to do today. Uh, up next, Anthony, we're going to announce the winner of the whipped cream bikini contest. Mm -hmm. Also, we do have to discuss the Sopranos a little bit. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people are saying, oh, it's the last episode this uh, Sunday. Like, everybody I talked to, I'm saying, no, there's two. Was this one and the next week's the big finale? Right. Don't confuse me. We're going to have a get whacked uh, contest uh, amongst ourselves. Little poll, little office poll, little office poll. We're going to get into that next. And, of course, we'll talk about that uh, beauty pageant thing that was on HBO right after The Sopranos. HBO is uh, brilliant with this. They know right after The Sopranos, if they put on one of these freak show shows, you know, they had the Bellevue thing, and then they uh, do the uh, little girl thing yesterday. Oh, the beauty pageant thing, like the JonBenet Ramsey type of beauty pageants, was the sickest thing. Yeah. We saw Angela, too, on uh, Friday, yeah. by the way, yeah, well, during our bus trip. Yeah, we've just begun, so yeah. stay there. 212-757-1027. We gave away the tool CDs. That's all set. Cool. We got lots of things to give away today because we have a backup. We have concert tickets for just about everyone that's playing this summer. So we'll do a few of those tickets today as well. The wisdom, the wisdom of OB, of OB and then and then the Unprotected sex, good. Cigarettes, very good. 1027 WNEW. 1027 WNEW is.
The Sports Guys at 5 a.m. The Radio Chick at 9. Ron and Fez at noon. Opie and Anthony at 3. Don and Mike at 7. Next time on a very special Ron and Fez. Ron and Fez reflect on childhood memories. When I was a kid, I lost my favorite doll baby. I cried and cried. When I was eight, I lost my favorite pocket knife. Oh, well, where'd you leave it? In a dead horse back. Are they keeping his evidence? Yeah. All on the next Ron and Fez. Ron and Fez. Middays, noon to three, 1027. WNEW. Anthony, uh, which one are we doing this time around? Horny goat weed. Horny goat weed? All right, pinnacle yeah, horny goat weed. The fine people at Pinnacle have a way to uh, spice up that sex life of yours that might be getting a little sluggish. It's called Pinnacle Horny Goat Weed. Stuff's for real. It's horny goat weed. And there's other horny goat weeds out there, but go for Pinnacle. Pinnacle Horny Goat Weed. The name of the herb comes from China. Been used for thousands of years. Pinnacle Horny Goat Weed contains all kinds of exotic botanicals. And what it does, it enhances your sex life. So if uh, you're having maintenance sex or, or you're, just, you're not in the mood anymore for some reason or you've been uh, impotent for a year, let's say, because of prostate uh, problems, <laughs> instead of destroying a fine city, take some Pinnacle Horny Goat Weed. That's not going to help the mayor's problem or finding out. I know. Ooh. We'll get into that a little bit today as well. You, yes. You nailed that, by the way. Oh, I, you could tell you a cranky guy. You didn't nail the mayor, but you nailed the situation. <laughs> well, <then. laughs> At least the mayor couldn't nail me. You said uh, close to a year ago that, uh, you know, this guy just... Not having sex. Was not having sex. Was not having sex. Was not having sex. Right. And that's what happened. You're stretched out. You're stressed out under too much pressure. Stretched out. <laughs> get your ass down to GNC. Get some Pinnacle Horny Goat Weaver. Call them up. 1-800-899-5323. This stuff's great. You're going to uh, you're gonna notice it's the single most potent, thoroughly exciting herbal supplement you've ever tried. Pinnacle Horny Goat Weed. Get it at GNC or call them. 1-800-899-5323. 1-800-899-5323. Pinnacle Horny Goat Weed. Get the weed and uh, you'll succeed. Okay. Anthony. Their psychosis is all real. This is not an app. Ponder it. Epic Ponder it. 1027 WNEW. It's the ONA Show. 212 757 1027 is our phone number. Uh, I guess we should talk about the Sopranos a little bit. Yeah. The yeah, second to last episode last night. It was a really good episode last night. Finally, some real action. Oh, oh my goodness. Tony choking uh, Gloria, that psycho bitch. Oh, my God. What a lunatic. And that's kind of scary when you see stuff like that. Because it's like, oh, all right, ne not that bad, but I think we can all relate to a psycho bitch. Oh. Oh. When she's threatening to go to his wife when he finally decides to break it off because she's a loony. Yeah, she panics. He goes, I'll, I'll call your wife. Yeah. Oh, He's just God. ready to open the door and leave. Would have been over. Right. I'll call your wife. Click. He shuts the door and locks it. I'll kill you. She comes at him with the corkscrew. <laughs> that was great. Yeah, she's got some trouble. So we, we have one episode left, and we have so many storylines that are not going to be solved. Yeah, this is going to carry over into next season, which uh, that's my biggest complaint about The Sopranos. They, they start so many storylines, and, and they don't ramp up any of them. And you no, gotta no, wait till January to get any answers on anything. Right. I, hopefully they'll wrap up. Um, I want to see the Jackie Jr. thing wrapped up. Uh, I don't think that's going to wrap up. I think that's, that's going to be the big, big tease. Jackie Jr. and a couple of his buddies, three of his buddies, decide they're going to uh, make a name for themselves, like Ralphie did, because Ralphie told him a story about how... Uh, when he was coming up, he uh, hit a, a card game that was going on in town. <laughs> Took all the money. All of a sudden, they had this newfound respect and stuff. So uh, Jackie Jr. decides he's getting three of his buddies. They're going to hit a card game. A card game, one of Ralphie's card games. It's his game. So uh, he's on the take for this, this card game. Now, did Jackie Jr. know that? Yeah. He absolutely knew. He goes, it won't matter. See, it's even better that way because if we get caught, We'll just have to give some of the money back, and we'll have a name for ourselves, regardless. So uh, they hash it out. They pull up. They tell the guy, wait in the car. And don't drive away. And uh, they put the hoods over their heads. They go into this poker game, draw their guns. All of a sudden, who's sitting at the table? Christopher when, turns around. When he turned around, I, I just went crazy. Christopher turned around like, oh, no, Christopher's at the game. <laughs> this is bad. Run away. Just at that point, run away. Cut your losses. But, no, they hold the guns on him. Uh, they start taunting the guys playing. And the guys playing are taunting them back. Like, you don't know who you're effing dealing with. 
Um, this is a small time, boys. Yeah. Yeah. Not much here. And, uh, before you know it, gunfire starts. And, uh, one of the guys gets shot, killed right in the chest. Got his name, but just gets killed. Then, uh, everyone just hits the deck. Christopher pulls out, shoots one guy right in the head. One of the guys that, uh, Jackie Jr. is with. Uh, and then they go running out in the street. The guy driving the car, gone, goodbye. He, he took off. He took off. First shot, he was gone. He panicked. So now Jackie and his buddy are outside. Uh, they, a car pulls up. Jackie puts the gun to the woman's head, drags her out, takes off, and leaves his buddy there in the road. Now Christopher comes out with uh, one of the other guys, puts the gun to his face, takes his hood off, sees it's one of Jackie's friends. The guy's going, please, I'm with Jackie, I'm with Jackie. Point blank, right in the face. Damn. The Great killing scene. I love it. Blam. I love it, Kelvin. <laughs> so now the big question. Will Jackie Jr. Get what's it? happening with Jackie? Right. The way uh, Tony left it with Ralphie was, Ralphie's a capo. It's his problem. If you want to deal with it by letting him slide, that's fine. You want to kill him, you know, I'm sure it'll be a, a popular move. Tony told him without telling him, pretty much kill him. You got to kill him. But I'll leave it up to you, whatever you want to do. So now, you know, who knows what's going to happen? That pisses me off. I want to see this. I wanted that wrapped up last night. Find him and kill him. <laughs> it's not going to be wrapped up. That'll be hanging there all summer long. I know. Eric, what's up? Hey, guys. Hey. Hey, listen, two things. First, he handed uh, Ralphie back the gun that he gave to Jackie Jr. Right. Like, like a sign, you know, right. use this gun. Right. Secondly, Ralphie already prepped Jackie Jr.'s mother. Yeah, saying that uh, Jackie was involved with drug Yeah, dealers. and it's going to be like a drug-related hit. You know, right. nobody's going to know. All right, Eric, Eric. All right. Let's slow down, though. David, Go ahead. David Chase is too smart for that, though. So you're buying it. It's going to be a twist, I'm telling you. He, he's making everyone believe that it's as, as easy as making making it look like Jackie Jr. OD'd or something. Well, not OD'd. I, I'm sure they're going to find him somewhere, but it's going to be like a drug hit. You know, nobody gets to blame. Right. That's what, that's what he's setting it up like. That's what David Chase is setting it up to be, but I, I you got to give the guy more credit. He, no. he, he has a way you of... you got to give him some credit, Mikey. Right. He has, he has a way of tricking, <laughs> tricking us with these uh, storylines. Later, guys. All right. I just gotta see, I gotta see it. There's no way he could live through this. And Christopher's livid pissed. Like he went to Tony, he goes, I'll find him tonight and he's bad, it's over. And Tony told him to calm down. And now Christopher's all pissed off. Really bad. Cause Christopher's getting, been getting crapped on and now he's starting to come into his own and he really wants to, uh, make a name for himself. And he can't have this punk busting in on one of the games he's at, shoot up the place, and not have any re retribution. Right, without a doubt. He'll look like a chump. Jason, what's going on? What's up, guys? Hey. Yo, what the hell was going on at the end of that episode? Tony didn't think that guy was getting killed when he went to his car talking to his wife. You know, that was a great scene, because you're right. As soon as he went over the hill... So you I, waited to see like, the cloud of smoke Yeah, I was off. expecting a big car bomb. But, but once again, David Chase played it perfectly. I think it's um, more they were trying to just show, look at this guy. He just threatened this woman's life. He wouldn't have had no problem shooting Tony's psycho girlfriend and leaving her there to die. And the next scene, he's talking to his wife about what he's bringing home and pulls away in his car, you know? It's like the whole gangster family guy thing. Yeah. Just, All right, guys, take it easy, man. Just kind of show, uh, even even though this is a, you know, a sick F mobster, he's pretty vulnerable to They're all guys. You know what's screwed up, though, now? You ruined, you reamed uh, The Sopranos for me, part of it, Opie. Wow, well, the eating thing? No. No, now every time they switch scenes and Tony is sitting in the shrink's office, yeah. I just go, oh, I do that every, I every go, time. Oh, enough. You know what I do? Enough. When they switch to the yeah to the office, I, I, I look at the clock and I'm like, oh, how many minutes are going to waste? I you know, know they're wasting I'm it like, in the shrink's office. We only have 20 minutes left. Someone's got to die. They're in the shrink's office again. Get out in the street or something. Get to the bing somewhere but the shrink's office. I can understand if it's something integral with the storyline, but now it's like they got to give the shrink bitch some t camera time. <laughs> So they, they write in a scene and leave it in like that. You don't really need it. You, ne you need one shrink scene, less than two minutes long every week. That is Done. it. That's it. I'll accept right. that. That's it. We get it. Tony has problems. We yeah, get it. We get it. I don't need to sit there and listen to her whining. Uh, kind of funny when Tony curses and gets a few cool lines in there. It's not when he's sitting in the shrink's office. But for the most part, when it comes on, I just go, ah. Oh. What happened to the sexual tension between those two? Nah, it's that's, over what they, now. that's what they were playing up last season, really. It's over now. Uh, Ron, what's up? Oh, what's up, Owen? Hey. Yo, do you, do you think they're, like, leaving all these storylines open? Because you know they're going to leave something for next season. Are they leaving too much open? 
I think so. It's getting too damn confusing. The last five weeks have all ended differently. To like end all these storylines, they're gonna have to kill half the cast. Yeah, I, they start a lot of storylines, and you, you just want some closure to some of this crap. Well, what's gonna happen to the rapist? Where the hell did he go? I know that's <laughs> another thing. Where the hell is he? That's that not getting taken care of. And that could have been a quick little five-minute thing to spice up one of the uh, the episodes. Yeah, let's let's kill send, a rapist. Send somebody into the shop and shoot him in the face. I'd love it. Unless the uh, it. unless the last episode of The Sopranos is gonna be like the end of The Godfather, where you know. All the, uh, everything settles on the, the last ten minutes. You know, I can't see it happening like that, though. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of gunshots in the last ten minutes, then. It better be. <laughs> I hope so. The Russian guy in the woods. Russian guy in the woods. Yeah. Paulie Walnut's a little shaky. Christopher pissed at Tony. Ralphie. That whole situation. The rape thing. Mm -hmm. uh, All right. Thanks a lot, fellas. All right. Take it easy. Bye. Meadows' black uh, boyfriend, they just blew that off. Yeah, even though they broke up and all, I understand, but there seemed to be more of a storyline there they could have explored. Mm -hmm. Maybe she's knocked up and is going to have a mooly baby. <laughs> I'm just using the common terms and tongue of the show, won't be. <laughs> this is what's going to happen. One person will be whacked or killed or just die. One? You're going to need a couple. One. One is dying this coming Sunday. That is it. That is it. Yes. Son of a bitch. That is it, my friend. Trevor, what's going on? Nothing. Okay. <laughs> hey. All right, Trevor, what do you have? What's going on, guys? Did you see, uh, I was reading the Daily News or something, and they said uh, James Gandolfini only wants to do one more season. He thinks there's too much violence. Oh, I know. I think oh. there's not enough. I think oh, I think everyone knows that, but I don't think that's a, a completely done deal. That's a perfect thing to do, because you know something? They're probably their contracts off. And he's saying, I'm only doing one more season. Meanwhile, they'll come to the table with some unbelievable cash. Because everyone could agree the Sopranos just exploded this year. I mean, it was popular last year. We all know that. But yeah. this year, it's taken on a life of its own. It just exploded. I mean, they got a, got a couple good years left in, it, in them at least. All right, Thanks, Trevor. Seth. Thanks, Seth. Bye. Let's go to Frank, who's next on WNEW. Frank. Hey, guys. Uh, my... My brother-in-law has a friend that said uh, again, Gal Delfini doesn't want to do the, the season. That's true. That, uh, uh, well, next season's the last season. Frank, 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 and, how many uh, times have you heard that in the industry where the people, the star of the show goes, oh, I don't want to do another season. Uh, <laughs> excuse me, how long has David Duchovny said that? He's still true. popping his head in on the X-Files. Well, listen, check it out. They said that uh, <laughs> the season finale him, for him next too. year uh -huh. is going to be in the movie. It's going to be a two-hour movie. Oh. I don't know if that's true or not, but that's what the, the, my brother-in-law was telling me. It's not a bad idea. Hey, think but, about it. But then again, good. the X-Files movie kind of, I don't know, kind of sucked. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that was supposed to be a big deal. Right, we'll see, Frank. All right, guys. Take it easy. I love you guys. All right, man. Bye-bye. Bye. Let's mm, go to Mark. Mark, what's going on? Hey, how's it going? Hey. Hey, last night when that guy drove away, um, after he got a car, there was a bullet hole in the window. I want, I want to know if anybody else saw that. Uh, when the car was driving away at the end? Right. No, I did not see that. Oh, I didn't see a bullet hole. Take a look at it tonight. After you put something in the back seat, he gets in the front seat and he drives away. Lower left-hand corner, there's a hole in the window, bullet hole. Mmm, look at that. Maybe she took a shot with the silencer or something, right? Mm. All right. Thank you. This guy, I hate people like Pete. Pete, no offense, but I don't believe any of this crap. Go ahead. I swear to God, man, I worked for a DJ company and I worked with a guy last night. It does lighting on the set, and he yeah. told me what happens. If you guys want to know what happens, I'll tell you. Sure, yeah. We, we've been sure taking calls like this every single week. and I'm, and, I'm and willing to bet money on it, man. I'll tell you what happens. And none of this pans out. Uh, Meadow's black boyfriend was supposed to be killed. Remember that one? Yeah, but this is coming firsthand from HBO. I got it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ruin it for you guys. You want me to ruin it? Yeah, go ahead, Pete. All right, I'll tell you what. Jackie Jr.'s stepfather kills him. That's coming from HBO. <laughs> Shut up. All right, Pete. Swear to God. Swear to God. Right. After last night's episode, there's a 50-50 chance you're going to be right. He either uh, kills him or he don't week, kill him. Would you guys like to put money on this one? Well, well I'm a dead man. Funny you uh, mention it. Yeah, we're going to do our own money thing in a little while here, Pete. But thank you. Listen, Opie, I like you. I'm telling you, bet against Anthony. I'm telling you right now. Do it. Thank you, Pete. All right. See you guys later. Bye. Dan from Hoboken checking in. Is this true? Uh, James Gandolfini in negotiations with Comedy World Radio. <laughs> I think Drudge Jr. Uh, scooped, <laughs> yeah, he scooped that one, right? Dave, what's up? Hey, O&A, how's it going? Good. 
Listen, the popular consensus within the guys who work on Sopranos is it's going to go the way of Falcone. Mm -hmm. Two dead, two snitches. You're going to get a couple of guys who run away and then uh, never get seen again. And it's really going to suck at the end. Uh, I don't know. Uh, all right, Dave. That's what everybody thinks who works on the job. Cool. James Gandolfini will still be Tony Soprano 10 years from now in the Bada Bing parking lot on a motorcycle jumping a shark tank. <laughs> Steve from <laughs> Cliff. <laughs> hey, he'll be, he'll be teaching shop class. John. What's up, guys? Hey. Two things. Um, First of all, when that guy, when he drove, drives the car, as soon as he goes over the uh, down the hill and he fades right out of sight, there's one car that passes going the opposite way, and then if you notice, a Mercedes goes by. Yeah, the I know. The same one that. He, he was, looks like the same one he was test driving. And the popular belief is already is that she's in the car stalking him out. Well, that's, uh, the David Chase kind of set it up that way, sure. And then al also, with all the people who talk everything, the popular be a rumor I heard for next week is that Ralphie will end up protecting him. The kid, Junior? Yeah. Uh, I heard it's going to be a thing where, and I think they kind of teased it last night in the preview. But John, so Ralphie's going to hide him. That's pretty obvious, too. It could easily go that way. We know that. True. All right. Thanks a lot, guys. All right, because Ralphie wants Tony so bad it's not even funny. How about uh, Christopher's girlfriend and the tennis instructor? You know, what happened? We were psyched to see something happen there. I would have loved to have seen maybe a nice HB, a la HBO lesbo scene. All right. You know what? You bring up a good point. I got yeah. a homework assignment for someone on instant feedback. List all the storylines that di just disappeared from this season on The Sopranos. Yeah, that you just you'd be amazed. Forgot about. You'd be, you'd be amazed how many storylines they just completely dropped. The feds taping and then losing the bug and uh, that story just. What about Meadows' ended. psychotic roommate? Meadows' psychotic roommate gone. What's just up? all of a sudden written out of the show. They were setting up some things there for a while. Yeah. Uh, Mario. Yeah. Hey. Uh, listen, before I get to my point, one of the, another storyline involves that guy last night that was supposed to shoot that girl. Do um, you remember when, in the beginning of the season, he was pissed off that they killed his twin brother? Yeah. And he came to Tony's house, he was going to shoot him? Yeah. All of a sudden, that, those feelings just disappeared? Yeah. I mean, come on. There's another storyline. Ah. He was, uh, he was right outside the house with a gun. Yeah. And he pissed in the pool. Right. Yeah, that gun. I right, listen. You, Anthony, you messed up that, that, that story last night about Chris. It, 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 this could have a, uh, a very important thing to do with the, with the end. He, well, he, that kid didn't say I'm with, uh, Ralphie Jr. He, oh, no, he said he was with Ralphie, yeah. Exactly. Not Jackie, yep. So then, Chris, Chris will probably remember that and tell Tony. You know yeah, what I'm but I, I think they know what the deal was. When he was saying he's with Ralphie, he's just trying to get himself out of trouble. And they knew he was with Jackie. Oh, yeah, no, no, they definitely knew he was Jackie. It's true. Mm. And, um, um, oh, man, I forgot what the hell I was going to say. Go ahead. No? Uh, but no, but you guys are definitely right with all the storylines. Hey, that, 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 that bullcrap started last season. Yeah, I know. Way, way too many stories. I thought, I thought the series was the best the first year. Alright. No, I'm breaking up. Thanks, fellas. Alright. No. It seems like they try to get something going, and then if they can't think what else to write for it, they just forget it and start something new. But, but some of these storylines aren't even really that important, so they could, they could give you a nice ending that would kind of spice up some of these other episodes. The rape thing, the rape thing would have been a five minute thing that you could have thrown in the middle of, uh, mm -hmm. one of these later episodes. Well, that obviously is good. That's got to pop up somewhere. You, said, you could say that about a lot of them. Ah, storylines, though. That's major, that's, though. That it's obvious that it's going to pop back up. It's one know. of those things, though, that when you see uh, her in the shrink's office, it pops instantly in your head. What happened there? That rape thing, the rape scene and everything. Yeah. So they got to take care of that. It's not like every time you look at Christopher, you think of the storylines that just went to the wayside with him. Mm -hmm. But that's like one of those that's sticking your head. And what about uh, when uh, Jackie Jr. and his buddies were holding everybody up at the card table? You saw Christopher kind of looking at him because he was the one that wasn't really saying anything. Oh, uh, he knew. He looked yeah, at his man. He saw his eyes. No, we, we all, yeah, we went over that already, right? Oh, okay. It's not like it's a secret. He knows Jackie yeah, we Jr. All know wants that. to kill him. I mean, Rich, what's no up? Secret, what's going on, fellas? Hey. Uh, from what I understand, like everything that's going on with uh, Jackie Jr. Yeah. is going to be the one thing that pushes Tony over the edge and it's going to, you know, cause him to basically bring down everything. And I don't know if it's so much like turn informant, but basically kind of like do like a whole soul cleansing. Because now with Jackie Jr., he kind of like, you know, broke the one promise that he made to his father. Mm -hmm. And that's going to, you know, and now with Christopher saying that we used to love him and everything, that, you know, it's going to kind of like lead to like a whole like, you know, like, you know, soul cleansing for Tony and that's how it's all going to end. That's basically he's going to self-destruct his own family. Uh, that's uh, that's one possibility. And even uh, 
when it first started, Junior kind of hinted at the fact that Tony would do that. Right. That he'd be the re that he would bring down his own family. Right. Yeah. Mm. All right, Rich. Thank you. Sure. How about Larry Boy wearing the wire? Remember that the little fat guy? Mm hmm. He was wearing a wire, and that story just went away. What happened? What happened? Well, someone's going to come up with a whole list of storylines from The Sopranos that they just dropped this season. That'll be yeah. interesting to look at, all on one paper. Uncle Junior's cancer they haven't talked about in a while. Wow. Is Gloria fin uh, finally written out? Mm. Does she come back no. next week? No, she'll be, she'll be back. Oh, pff, that's what you're saying about uh, the uh, yeah, storyline. True, true, you're right. What do I know? Bernie! Yeah, hi. I know for a fact uh, Joe Pantoliano, uh, Ralphie. Mm -hmm. He signed a two-year deal when he came on. I'll tell you right now, there's no way they can kill off Ralphie. No, he's come coming back, and he's going to protect Jackie, and they're going to get with Jimmy Sachs. And that's going to start a war, and uh, the loyalties are going to depend on Paulie and Christopher, but Silvio's going to have a bigger role next year. Right. And that's where the war is really going to be. It's going to, they're going to split into the two families again. Mm. All right. Well, we'll see. That's a definite, definite possibility. And uh, I think you're right, Opie. I think one person's getting whacked, and I think it's the prick doctor, because I think Gloria is actually going to whack him. All right. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> these are my three guys that I think will get that are odds-on favorite. Odds-on to get what whacked? Who get whacked on Sunday? Got to throw Jackie Jr. in there. Mm -hmm. You got to throw Christopher in there. And I'm going to go with uh, Paulie Walnuts. Everyone else safe. Safe, you think? Safe. Mm -hmm. If I had a guess, I, th I would go with Christopher. I think they're going to blow us away and just... That's a huge loss, though, for the show, I mean. That's my guess. See, there's a thing. It would be a great thing to have some of these people buy it, but it kind of is bad for the show. Right. One's Christopher's going. got a good character on it. One's going. One's going. Mm-hmm. Maybe Christopher. They gotta end the season big. I'm telling you, one person's going. Christopher kills Jackie, and then Tony kills Christopher. <laughs> he wouldn't do that. You want to have a pool? Tony turned into a pussy, is what it is. He could smack people around. He could punch a bitch in the face. We saw that last night. <laughs> but uh, he could choke slam her <laughs> onto a table or whatever. Yeah. But as far as killing people, I come on. He's shown weakness toward uh, Paulie Walnuts, Christopher, Ralphie, Gloria. Yeah, people should be killed. Who else, uh, Earl? No, remember he was on the phone. He was mentioning that his case was still pending, the Rico case. So, oh yeah. So he was yeah. like, "Don't kill anyone because that'll just bring up." Yeah. That was the thing he told Christopher. Yeah, but that doesn't matter. You, you got to take care of business. You can't just just because you got a case pending. You're a uh, ditzel. What? Tony? Yeah. A moving yarn, charcoal briquette. Chris, what's going on? I don't think uh, Tony wants Jackie killed. No. No, he put the decision into Ralphie's hands, and I think he's not going to get whacked. And I think what happens is Ralphie's going to turn double on him, and he's going to hook hook up with that guy from Florida with the fat wife. Hmm. No, no, no. Oh, no, I, I think Tony just doesn't want anything to do with it. He wants Ralphie to take care of the situation. And what's, um, I think a storyline they ought to resolve is Tony blowing his nose. <laughs> what's with it after every line he says? I can't take this crap. <laughs> <laughs> like, what's wrong with his nose? You hear that? <laughs> is that worse than how he eats on the show? <laughs> He's just really a disgusting guy. He really is. He's <laughs> fat. When they show on a bed with that hot chick, it's like, ah, ah. All right, who's eating? He's always, like you said, flopping the stuff around the plate and <laughs> breathing heavy. we got to get the whole show in here. We're going to do the office pool? Office pool. Who wants in? Earl, you got 10 bucks? We'll do this next because we've got to get Steve and everybody. <laughs> You guys can do this where you work as well. We're going to go 10 bucks a man. Uh, I think everyone can agree that someone's either getting whacked or, or going to be dead. Or, God, I hope it's not Dr. Kennedy. Or killed. I love that man. Dr. Kennedy. Right. So uh, we're putting a bunch of names in the hat. Yeah. Ten, 10 bucks. We all just t pick a name out of the hat. 10 bucks to get in. Yep. 
The whack pool. The whack pool. Not like a circle jerk. Don't get confused. The whack pool. The whack pool on the bus was the water that the kegs are flowing. Uh, after Norton got on it, that was a whack pool. We got oh. we got to talk to Norton about the jellyfish that was floating. Oh. Jellyfish, the Portuguese man of war. He <laughs> <laughs> got tendrils on it. That thing had <laughs> that thing had tentacles. You're right. Man. Oh, it was disgusting. <laughs> It was multiplying on the way back to Manhattan. <laughs> yeah, it was getting bigger. It was just, what the hell was going on? <laughs> oh, all right, so uh, tell me if I'm missing anyone from our pool. Because we only have like eight guys, I think, so we had to pick eight that are more obvious. Mm. Well, this one's definitely not obvious. This is the goof factor, I guess. Tony Soprano. Uh, I wouldn't put it... Eh. Eh. <laughs> all right. Uh, Gloria. Yeah. Christopher. Okay. Tell me if I'm missing anyone. Paulie Walnuts. Yeah. Jackie Jr. Yeah. Ralphie. Mm -hmm. Artie. Artie. And Uncle Jr. That's all I have, really. Uh, uh, to be added? What about the uh, the rapist? I said Paulie. Yeah. No, no, Anthony Jr. Anthony Jr., shut up. He's barely been on the show. Have, have you, did, you, did you see the uh, the upcoming episode? All of a sudden, he's all, he's all over the little uh, thing in the house. Something's going down there. All over one little thing. <laughs> the preview. You didn't see the preview? Yeah, but what are you talking about? What? Yeah, that's all. He's in a preview. All of a sudden, they're showing there's a problem with Anthony Jr. I think maybe somebody's going to take something out on him that they've got that they've got on Tony. Yeah, he was caught smoking pop behind the school. And there you go. And his pops is mad. <laughs> that is like the biggest waste of a character. There's nothing going on. He's oh, just a God. miserable kid that listens to Slipknot in his room. <laughs> <laughs> He's my pick. And Cold Chamber, which rocks, by the way. Cold Chamber's a sick band. The Russian dude that got shot in the head. Uh-uh. Okay. Uh, oh, boy. Then how are we going to do this? The missing Russian guy? You know what? You put them all in there. Whatever's left is left. Is left? Okay. It's got to be. All right. Then, uh, there all right. might be a really good person that no one gets. All right. Which would suck, but Russian guy. Here, get another piece of paper, right, Russian guy. Um, and, and you want to put, like, Noah in there? That's stupid, though. Why are they going to come back to the Noah situation four weeks later? Mm. The rapist, though. The rapist? Uh -huh. Okay, throw, here. Put the right. rapist in put there. Put the, rap the rapist in and the, the Russian mob guy. Anthony Jr., Rick. <laughs> You're insane. <laughs> Rick. Here, you could have Anthony Jr. without picking one. I want Anthony Jr. You give us the ten bucks. All right. You're insane. They're not going to kill the kids. Why not? They're just not. Carmella would die before Anthony Jr. Is Carmella in there? I don't know. I think throw, she's got a contract. throw Carmella in there because that lack of glory is, you yeah, never know. Cool. She's the whole psycho factor. You don't know who she might kill. All right, throw Carmella in there. Uh, think, can you think of anyone we're missing in our little hat? The, Janice? The, the, Janice? Janice. Janice. Could be, dude. Could be. Right, throw Janice in there as well. And what about the the guy last night uh, that that threatened Gloria? I always forget his name. So let's put Billy Mac wants in as well. Okay, just put Hitman guy. <laughs> Hitman guy. All right, we'll pick our names next. All right, it's the whack pool. You guys could do that at your office as well. Kind of cool, right? Sure. We all know someone's going. Also, yes, and we're an hour late uh, mentioning it, figures, uh, the winner of the whipped cream bikini contest. Yeah. We promise we'll, we'll announce that next, I swear. Yeah. You have my word, okay? All right, 212-757-1027 is our phone number as well. Hello, this is broken down, washed up, former WWF wrestler, current best-selling author Mick Foley, and you're listening to Opie and Anthony on 102.7 WNEW. Anthony Sobe Beverages. Sobe. I was drinking some Sobe uh, with lunch today. Ah, uh, Sobe. It's kind of weird. I drank the Sobe beverage at lunch. Yeah. I had the, the Planet Java during the show. Java. And we end the day with Sam Adams. Nice. Nice mix. Our family of beverages. I was drinking uh, strawberry carrot today, I think. Strawberry carrot Sobe? Yeah, it was pretty good. Yeah. It's the leader in a healthy refreshment, they call it, I think. All these Sobe beverages, specially formulated to uplift the mind, body, and spirit with great tasting teas and fruit blends that uh, have been enhanced with herbs and other natural supplements. This week's flavor is Sobe Drive from the Power Line. A great tasting uh, natural grape strawberry punch with a passion producing herb package of uh, epidemium. Horny goat weed, that's what that is, for a male potency, Siberian ginseng to increase stamina, and uh, Muria Puma, or Puama, whatever the hell it's called. It increases your sex drive. 
Another thing, we ought to send a case of Sobe to Gracie Mansion. Can we do that? Mm. Let's send, can we do, let's get a bunch of things together like horny goat weed, some Sobe drive, and um, send it to uh, the mayor we to help his limping penis. Can we put a strap on in the, in the care package? Let's do that, too. Sobe's unique packaging consists of the 20-ounce uh, lizard embossed glass bottle and labels that feature the brand uh, signature, Sobe Lizards. Under each cap, there's a different lizard slogan, too. For more info about Sobe and uh, all the different products, go to SobeBev.com, or you can call them up and share any experiences with the lizard line, 1-800-588-0548, and be on the lookout for the Sobe Lizard Love Bus spreading the Sobe experience all over the country. So grab a Sobe and drain the lizard. <laughs> Long Island. This is 1027 WNEW. How are you? Now we're having fun. Alien Ant Bar, man. How are you? How are you? Criminal. 1027 WNEW is the OB and Anthony show. Yes. 212 757 1027. I want to thank uh, Lieutenant Boogaloo for helping us out with some of the storylines from the Sopranos this season that they just decided to drop. Yeah. He's listed 18 of them, and I'm sure there's a lot more. Really fast. Some of the storylines that have been dropped in The Sopranos. Uh, the black boyfriend, Noah. Mm -hmm. The psycho girlfriend, Gloria. Well, that hasn't officially been dropped yet. Uh, the bug in the lamp. Yeah. The guy who wanted to kill Tony. Mm -hmm. That's, that's what, uh, What's his name? Uh, someone's getting pissed because we're not getting... Uh, Patsy Paris. Thank you. Yeah. I'm getting pissed because we don't know all the names of the characters. Whatever. I don't sit there and with a pen and paper writing it all down. I can't keep track. The guy who wanted to kill Tony basically when he was outside his house at the pool and peed in the yeah. pool. Artie and uh, Adrienne. Or Adriana, right? Yeah. Adriana and the tennis instructor. Uh, Janice searching the house for gold. <laughs> Janice and the Russians. Yeah. That, that was kind of... Well, yeah, yeah that's how he kind of uh, took care of that, but no. there's still a little more there. The rapist, Dr. Melfi in her own therapy, which I hate more than when uh, oh. Tony's doing the therapy. Oh, I'd rather watch a Tony eating scene. Tony and uh, lunch meat? What's that? Am I missing? What's that? Help me out, Steve. What? He passes out every time uh, he was eating the, the uh, cup of gold. Oh, yeah, okay, 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 right. Well, they kind of figured that out, too. All right. That it was because uh, he saw his father chop that guy's uh, finger off right. in the pork store. Paulie and the Russian. Mm -hmm. Artie's divorce. Christopher and Artie. Uncle Junior's cancer. Yeah, I Tony, have cancer. Tony and Guido the killer pimp. The guy wearing the wire. Tony and the Russian mistress. Just a few of them. Mm -hmm. What about uh, um, uh, Anthony Junior passing out? Another well, yeah. storyline they kind of just said, eh, ain't going anywhere. He is a waste of a character. All right, we got everyone in here. All right, are we ready? Yeah, everyone playing? Yep. We got seven people. And Billy Mac, Billy Mac, if you're listening, you should call. Someone will pick your name out of the hat. We're doing the whack pool here. We got like 12 names, so a few of the names won't even be picked, so we might not even have a winner. Right? Yeah. So I'm throwing the names in the hat. Very easy. Ten bucks a man. We all pick a name because I, I think we could all agree someone's getting whacked or killed or dying. Next Sunday on The Sopranos, season finale. Yeah. Winner, winner will take all, okay? Who wants to pick first? I'll pick first. All right. I like that. Hat full of good names. Hat's in front of Anthony. It's the whack pool. He's picking a name. He's got a name in his hand. Ah, uh, Valeri. You got Valeri, the Russian oh, mob guy. Oh, the Russian guy. mob guy? Okay. Yeah. Oof. Oh, <laughs> everyone's laughing at Anthony. Do we get two? Because there's uh, there's twice the amount in there than there are people. Um, well, we don't have, we only have like, tw how many names we got in here? Once again, we just suck. <laughs> Wait, let me see. Here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's eleven left. Mm -hmm. We needed like thirteen. We left three right? more. There are a couple more. Let's. We only need two more. Two more names. Yeah, come have. up with two more. You want to put... Hi. Why not? All right, put Dr. Dr. Melfi ain't dying. Melfi's boyfriend. He ain't dying. 
You never know. <laughs> Who? You know, the Russian, uh, Valeri's not really a bad pick, because think about it. Wait, if, uh, if, if he, like, ended up in a hospital somewhere where no one could identify him and he's laying there dying and stuff and they find out and figure they could put an end to him before he opens his mouth, I'm, I'm in. Look at you trying to talk up your name. What about Furio? Uh, no, he's not in there. That's a good All one. Right. And, and Earl had another one. Uh, Johnny Sachs. Johnny Sachs? All right. All right, we'll put Johnny Sachs in there, too. Not Dr. Melfi. That ain't happening. Now he can each pick two. Get, get John, write down Johnny Sachs and we're in. We got all our bases covered. <laughs> now he can each pick two. Yeah. But we Good. Gotta, we got to go around one. And Ben, shake this up because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go a second. Rick's just getting Johnny Sachs in there and then we'll... All right. Throw that in there. Shake them around. Nice. Let me go to Rich real fast. Rich, what's up? Rich. What's happening, guys? What's going on? Turn, um, turn well, down, you, Rich, turn down, yeah. turn down your radio. I'm sorry. That's a delay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Sorry. Up the whole show. What do you got? Yeah. Well, I do work on the show, and um, the ending is. I'll just tell you this about the 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 ending when the end, show ends. You'll be incredibly disappointed. I won't tell you exactly what happens, but I'll tell you that Jackie Jr. does get killed next week. I'll tell you that um um. Ralph and Paulie have like a fight, mm -hmm. and Tony um, sides with um, Ralph, which I found a little bit of a twist. But I, I, I'm not going to tell you exactly what happens at the end, but I will tell you. Thank you. Hey. 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 Thank you. Hey. Hey. He's not. Dead. I don't believe any of these stories. And if you guys are all pissed off in your cars, don't worry, because now we've heard. Uh, no, dude, I was at the funeral home when they filmed uh, Christopher in the casket. <laughs> no, it's no. I mean, we've heard four different people now, and everyone swears that's the truth. So don't worry about yeah. it. Yeah, I'm picking a name. It's the whack pool, Anthony. Well, that's a good one. What about the kid that was driving the getaway car that left? What was his name? Uh, that's that's a good one. Who'd you get, Uncle Junior? Uncle Junior, uh, and I got you, Uncle Junior. <laughs> God. Uh, who's next? We'll just go around the room here. Here we go. Ben now picking. What do you got? Ah, good one. Polly Walnuts. Polly Walnuts. Ben. Oh, ben, right. looking good. Ben's got the Polly Walnuts. Steve, you're next from FoundryMusic.com. Come on, give him a lousy one. Steve always wins these. Yeah. Yeah. What do you got? Yeah, I rigged it. <laughs> Jackie Jr. Oh, oh come on. Oh, you oh, you oh, suck. Win. Steve, you win. always win. get the favorites on these whenever we play. I'm not. I'm tired of this. I don't know how you do it, Rick. That doesn't count. What? Put it back in the hat. What was that? You're, what was that? He's looking. Don't be an idiot. You're looking right into the hat. You oh, you lying sack of crap. We all You guys are full. Rick, you're so cheating. I just not. Everyone's going Everyone's gone. Oh, you're lying. Oh, you're lying. Oh, you're cheating. Oh, you guys don't know what the hell's going on. I don't know what the hell's going on. Because he's. Hold on. No, no, no. I want to pick that. No, I know why Sticky's upset. No, because we said we're going around the room, so you did skip over Sticky, first of all. Oh, okay. Second of all, you're staring right into the hat, looking at all the names. This is legal, isn't it? This is legal, isn't it? Hold the hat. Hold the hat for Sticky. They're upside down. No, they're not all upside down. Yes, they are. He's just trying to pull a fast one. Give me the hat. Give me the hat. I am going to prove that they're not all upside down. No, now they're not. Oh, oh, now he's turning them all. Here. Look. Give me the hat. He saw through the little part in the no, back of the hat. Say. Give me the hat. You're saying they're all upside down. I didn't see anything. I oh, could see Furio's name. I could see Artie's well, name. Well, that's because you're looking into the hat. That's what you're doing. This is legal, isn't it? No, this is legal, isn't it? That's why we're saying this is legal, isn't it? That's why we told everyone to hold the hat up high and, and, and take one out. So and what's up, Rick? How are you? This is legal, isn't it? I'm not looking at that stupid hat. I can now we're having fun. They're all bad names anyway. <laughs> Shut up. Anthony saw it. I saw it. And Ben no, saw okay, it. <laughs> Think he's up. Who? <laughs> Think he's up. Think he's named for the last pool. Janice. Ah. Oh. You lose, you get nothing. <laughs> I see your legs come back. I wasn't the only one, so relax. I see your legs come back. Ben was the one that started. He was laughing his balls off because he saw it. I used to <laughs> 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 when I had the rapist. Now I got Ralphie. Uh, Ralphie ain't dying, though. Earl, Earl, your turn. 
What do you got? Furious. Yeah, he would have died at the card game. Billy Mac. Oh, someone's got to pick for Billy Mac. Oh, do, do we have enough people still for Billy Oh, Mac no, we don't. Play? No, we Billy don't. Mac, sorry, you're not playing. Yeah, Billy Mac's out. It, it goes back to Anthony. Back to me. We should have seven names left in the hat. Anthony's second name in the whack pool. Give me a good one. I got Artie Buko. <laughs> oh, man. So you got Artie Buko and who else? And uh, Valeri. Yeah, the, the Russian, Russian mod guy. guy. I'm still feeling good about the Valeri, though. I'm feeling good about it. All right. By the way, if someone asks, uh, what if uh, more than one person gets whacked? Obviously, we just split that. We gotta split it. Yeah. All right, here we go. It would be good if oh, the people you have. Who would you just get? I am so done. <laughs> Uncle Junior get? and Carmella. Ah, oh, you're out. You are out. I'm so out. Ah. Oh. You oh. get nothing. You lose. Good day, sir. My name is suck more than yours. Oh, yeah, that's horrible. Uh, My... Another good one, Gloria. All right, so Ben, you got oh. Glory and who else? Paulie Walnuts. And Paulie Walnuts. That's not bad. Oh, here comes Steve C. Now. Steve C., who has uh, a Jackie Jr. as his first pick. Ah. God. Who now? Who now? Johnny Sex. All right. Johnny. All right. You got two yeah. all right names, man. Pretty good. All right, thank you. Your, your next name? Christopher. Yeah, that's not bad. I like the Christopher pick. Not bad. I'll trade you Carmella for Christopher. <laughs> <laughs> Who's up next? Rick? I don't see your lying scumbag. Rick's second name? I got the rapist again. All right, so you got the rapist, the rapist. And, uh, and Ralphie. And Earl? There's only one name left, right? Unless we did the math wrong. Take it oh, look at us. Tony. Tony's the Tony. 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 <laughs> so, uh, uh, nobody, nobody gets whacked next week. No. Oh, you can't change that. So who do you got, Tony and who? And Syria. <laughs> oh, well, all right, write it down. Somebody uh, take the minutes of this meeting. Make sure we all know who we got. Steve, God, let me here. I'll read it off really fast. Anthony in the whack pool has uh, Valeri and uh, Artie Bucco. Do you have some? No. Okay. Uh, I have Uncle Junior and Carmella. Ugh. Ben has Polly Walnuts and Gloria. Oh. Steve has Jackie Junior and Johnny Sachs. Mm. Stinky has Janice and Christopher. Rick has Ralphie and the Rapist, and Earl has Furio and Tony Soprano. <laughs> <laughs> and Earl just leaves in shame. <laughs> uh, all right, that'll be fun to see how yeah. that plays out someday. We'll see what happens. I'm so done. Okay, we have to announce the winner of the whipped cream bikini contest. It would be yeah. so easy to take a break here because we're late, but we did promise, didn't we? We uh, Did we promise that we were going to do it right now? Yeah. All right, hold it on. would be a real dick move if we went to commercials right now. All right, let's go to the uh, page. And it would be a real dick move if we went to commercials right now. This band didn't just set up. Oh, just kidding. You're horrid. All right. Here are the finalists that um, we've been dealing with. Now, Ben, write all that down. They're 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 conferencing outside the studio. Three finalists left. Yeah, they are. In no particular order. Jesse, mm -hmm. Celia, mm -hmm. and Kelly. Correct. Those are the three girls that have made it through the cut. Uh, all the other ones out. Yeah, Emilisa came in fourth place. Yeah, Emilisa out today. She was out today. Knocked out by Knocked a slim out. margin. So I guess the three girls remaining all will win something. Fine. Yes, of course, first place, that trip to Hawaii. Courtesy of Kantiki Tours. Isn't that great? Second place is a trip down to the Jersey Shore. Yep. And uh, what was third place? Like a tool city or something? <laughs> a Mustache ride. No idea. I don't think we have Knowing us, a tool CD, a Rocky DVD, and a and WWF tickets for for like I don't know a ski without binding. Oh yeah, yeah, we got the bindings from the last contest. It's um, well, it is third place. We're really looking for the first place. Second place, you get a consolation. Oh, no, we got it. Okay, here it is. Third right. place is a gift certificate for $100, courtesy of whippedcreambikini.com, right? Oh. Huh? There you go. Yeah, you go to whippedcreambikini.com and you can spend some money. Oh, okay, you spend $100 at whippedcreambikini.com? Yeah. Okay. Third place in the whipped cream bikini contest, Anthony, for the $100 gift certificate is? Third place, she was a favorite, did very well in the voting, our own Jessie from mm -hmm. the uh, Voyeur Bus. You might remember her. 
Jesse, congratulations. Third place. We want to talk to some of these ladies today. I think we're trying to call them, or they could call us. Either way, it would be great, okay? Yes. Now, I guess we got to go right to first place. That's how they do it. Yeah. They have the, uh, the runner-up thing, and then now we just announced the winner, and whoever uh, isn't uh, announced is the uh, second-place person. Right. So now it's between Kelly and Celia. And Celia. For the trip to Hawaii, courtesy of Kantiki Tours. Opie, once again, it was the battle between... The natural boobs and the boob job. That's right. And uh, we know how that's worked out in the past. But this time, a little bit of a surprise. No, there isn't. Natural boobs won out again. Kelly is the winner of our best boob contest. Celia with the uh, fake boobs coming in second. Or whipped cream bikini contest, excuse right. me, of course. Kelly has won the trip to Hawaii courtesy of Kantiki Tours. Yes. Celia came in second place. She's got the... The long weekend trip to uh, Laurel Bay Inn in Ocean City, New Jersey. I hear it's really, really nice down there. So yes. there you have it. We're going to talk to all the uh, the finalists, hopefully in a few minutes here. Right, Rick? Yep. We'll get Kelly and Jesse and Celia on the phone. All right? Great job, girls. You kind of tricked me. I didn't think you were going to announce the winner there. I, had, I was going to, like, play a little song before you announced the winner. Oh, see, I was tricking everyone. <laughs> Uh, hey, who's the stripper? <laughs> uh, Put it in a that's not a tease for the next the next segment we're doing on this show today. I don't know what else to tell you. That's awful. If you didn't keep HBO on last night after The Sopranos, you missed another unbelievable show. Yes. Uh... <laughs> that is awful. That is going to be that is going to be our theme song for every other female orientated contest from now on. That was horrible. Yeah, I'm All right. So, once again, whipped cream bikini contest is over. The fine Jesse, who turned 20 recently, one of yes. our teenagers, uh, no longer a teenager. She came in third place. Mm -hmm. Celia with the fake boobs came in second. She's got the long weekend at Laurel Bay Inn, Ocean City, New Jersey. And first place, uh, quite frankly, she ran away with the contest. Ran away with it. Uh, do we have official votes, like as far as percentage-wise, Joe? She, she had more than twice the votes of anyone else. Of anyone else. And uh, she got off to a great start. Right. In the lead. Didn't give up the lead the whole race. No. Amazing. When, Ellie. When the voting started, she had nine votes and Celia had two. And yeah. we projected the winner. The ratio continued we, like that. We projected the winner in our office right yeah. there after 11 votes. How scary is that? Yeah. When you do, the, uh, it's hard to explain, but when you do these type of contests, you can see voting patterns. It's pretty creepy. And you can tell pretty early on um, who's going to win. And we even think when, when uh, some of your favorites get eliminated early and their votes then have to go to someone else, they follow the same patterns. Mm -hmm. So even though you're, you're giving up uh, one of your girls because she's out, for some reason... Kelly's lead never uh, wavered yeah, for we'll, a second. We'll get Kelly on the phone hopefully in the next few minutes, okay? Mm -hmm. And, of course, we'll talk about the baby beauty pageant thing from HBO. Ah, Life. the baby beauty pageant. As we go to break, let's... Hey. <laughs> As we go to break, let's rock out with Drew Boogie. Everybody talking about the Opie and Anthony show. We don't care. He's talking about I know I'm a loser. You're a jerk off. A douche. You effing tool. I'm a tool. I'm a dumb twat. Okay, pathetic. Someone just shoot me in the head. Okay, terrific, thank you. 
to the ONA show. Yes. 1-800-LAW-CASH. This is kind of interesting. If you have a pending lawsuit right now, instead of waiting years and years for a settlement, you call 1-800-LAW-CASH, and they give you the money now, right now, when you really need it. It's 1-800-LAW-CASH. They advance you uh, as little as 500 bucks, as much as 100000 for pending personal injury. Now practice in other lawsuits you have. <laughs> call 1-800-LAW-CASH. They work with your attorneys to obtain all the facts of your case before advancing money. 1-800-LAW-CASH, it's not a lender. They only advance money to individuals for use in their own specific economic necessities. Thousands of people have been helped by getting cash advances against their lawsuits. Get your money now. You don't have to pay law cash any money until the case settles. And if you lose your case, you owe 1-800-LAW-CASH nothing. Big or small, 1-800-LAW-CASH advances money against pending lawsuits now. And attorneys, 1-800-LAW-CASH also advances money for disbursements, expert witnesses, and other cash needs. 1-800-LAW-CASH also provides money for settled cases and structured settlements. Call them right now, 1-800-LAW-CASH, and get money now. The community is striking off. Sophie and Anthony Show, a smorgasbord of idiots. 1027. The greatest radio I've ever heard. WNEW. Yeah, 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 Ramstein. I hate this place. Ramstein. I hate this place. Ramstein. I hate this place. Too hot. Ah, what a goose step march song this is. Oh, God, it just brings your energy right up. Yeah. What are you doing? The O&A Show, 212 And do you know what's going on with our contract? No. <laughs> not a clue. I got not a clue. A lot of people think we're playing some kind of wacky radio bit like, like other guys have done in the past. Mm -hmm. We really don't know what's going on with our contract uh, discussions. I have no clue. I'll tell you one thing. It seems like the company doesn't really care. <laughs> Either way. Yeah. That's all right. We got options. I guess when we read things in the paper that uh, the company doesn't care, when they deal with other people that get uh, publicized like that in the paper, uh, I hate to say it, but I guess that was true. <laughs> I guess that's, that's how we're being dealt with. I believe we have uh, a little over two weeks left in our contract. and uh, Two? And we really don't know what's going to happen, though. And it's not a radio bit. We're not holding out for more money and this and that. We just want to be taken care of, that's for sure, but we really don't know. No, we, we have no clue. No one has uh, talked to us in about quite some time. Well over a week. It's been a long time. Don't look at it like it's a bit, because we really don't know. I know we'll be fine, I can tell you that. I, I don't know. No one's talked to me. I haven't heard a word. I just find it a little strange. Yeah. Is this like scare tactics, you think? I, I, we'll scare the guys into re-signing? I, I, I don't know. I... <laughs> That's yeah, pretty funny. So there's your update, because uh, someone on the instant feedback asked, and uh, we don't know. We really don't know. We could either continue with like, business as usual and maybe add a market or two, or we might have to take the whole summer off. I don't know. <laughs> the way it is. I don't know. All right. Anthony. Hey. 
a lot of people on hold, they want to talk about the, what was it called, the baby beauty pageant on HBO? Uh, I think it was called Living Dolls. Living, Living Dolls. Dolls. Where's that? Yes. Where's that song that started off the show? If this isn't disturbing, HBO did a whole uh, investigative report. Yeah, it was like a little documentary on those beauty pageants um, that go on all over the South and uh, out in the Southwest. And uh, you might uh, know Jean Benet Ramsey. Mm -hmm. She was uh, in these things. All the pictures you see of little Jean Benet Ramsey were taken from shows like this, where they take these little girls, talking three, four, five year old girls. Uh, time out. Yeah. Less. less. We less. found out last night less. There's an age category zero to 18 months. 18 months. Where the moms are just holding babies that are dressed up and yeah. the judges decide who's like the hottest looking baby, I guess. Just dress them up when they fly out of the womb. But how weird is it that it's, uh, the category is zero to 18 months? Age zero. You got some of these kids, uh, you know, poking their head out so the judges get a look at them? She's wearing a labia majora <laughs> around her neck right now and... Uh, She's looking wonderful. Yeah, and, and look, she's got a beard. You know, it's funny, on, on one of them... Break that <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. Was, we don't know if she's a boy or a girl yet, because she hasn't been fully delivered. Right. No, later on, like, 45 minutes into it, they, they, they're showing this one mother. She goes, yes, this, this is the first time we're competing with hair. Oh. They got yeah. hair extensions for, like, a, a nine-month-old baby. Her or the baby? Which one? <laughs> they yeah. Have a big patch. So, um... Yeah, this stuff is going on, mostly in the South. I don't think you hear it up up, up in the North. It's such a white trash thing. It's these women, and they enter their little daughters in these beauty pageants. And you think, if you think it's like, all right, we'll get the little kid, and it's sort of a prettiest kid contest where, oh, look how pretty she is. Give her a prize. No, they dress them up like little whores. They dress them up like strippers, like street walkers, like dancers and parade them on the stage to try to look sexy and hot to okay. the judges. All the moves are to look hot for the judges. Yeah. They, they showed some of these girls that are four, five, six years old getting hair extensions, getting yeah. their hair dyed and foiled, getting, um, all, you know, the, the, the whore makeup put on. Uh, whore makeup. They're talking about fake eyelashes on some of these girls. Big glossy lipstick on lips that, I mean, are for whores doing moves where they put their hand on the side of their head one on their hip, and start shaking their ass, their non-existent little ass. You know what? It would be it's, it would be so easy just to go on the radio and goof on and say, wow, they were all hot and stuff. But we did that last night watching the show. <laughs> so <laughs> today, I, I was watching the show. I was I I was deeply disturbed that this is going on and people have no problem with it. Yeah, let me tell you something. I mean, what about the girls with no teeth and they're putting, uh, uh, whatever they call them? Nine-year-old boy with no teeth. <laughs> right. They're putting the, they fake, fake teeth the in. fake teeth in. So they'll look hot. Hotter. But, like, you know, we believe me, this is a, show, a subject we goof on on this show all the time. I mean, it's, it's so dark humor. It's so, it's effed up and stuff. And, and it's funny when we goof on it. But to see like that in real life, that these uh, white trash mothers treating their kids like this, it was despicable. You just watch these women and want to want to hit him with a shovel. Well, all the moms have problems. That's obvious. The, the first thought I had watching this: hmm. How did such ugly mothers have such cute kids? Yeah, because yeah. all the they show the mothers and they're just fat, they're just disgusting, ravaged by alcohol, and a husband that probably smacked him in the face and ravaged <laughs> by alcohol. That's really so bad. Haven't showered in weeks. Oh, they're all greasy head. They they're uh, holding drinks and they're just like taunt. They torturing their kid. Stand up straight. You smile. What are you doing with your arms on your hips like that? You look like a chicken. Smile, I said, God damn it. I said, what? It's a five-year-old kid. You're yelling at for not looking like the whore you did at the bar 20 years ago when you might have uh, been able to score something. Yeah, well, the whole show re re revolved basically around uh, uh, Swan and her mom. Swan. That mom had problems. In a lot of the scenes, you could see the drink very close by. And it, oh, of course. And it wasn't just a beer. She was, like, doing just scotch without the rocks. I've got the drink. And then they're showing these uh, kids all dressed up like little whores around their stepfathers and, and boyfriends of the mothers that are picking them up and fondling them a little too closely, you know? I felt sorry when Swan, like, uh, went into uh, yeah her mom's boyfriend's arms. I'm like, man, if that's only a matter of time. Uh, and that one uh, other guy that's in the crowd, the kid toucher looking guy, was like, uh, with, with a smile, looked like a little faggot. Oh, Martin Short? The Martin Short the guy? The Martin Short guy. 
So and his, his whole job, Gino. his whole job is to train these kids for these pageants. Yes, that, he didn't look like a kid toucher. He's got this mesmerized look on his face as he's watching the little girls dance around, and it just like he, if you could, you didn't have to read his mind. Uh, Anthony, I think you missed the point. What? You're right. He was getting a little bit, a uh, little bit turned on, but I think he was looking at, at the little boys. Oh, I know. Yeah, I'm just saying, kid toucher in general. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Because they had the little boys in these contests too, dressed up like little uh, Chippendale stars. <laughs> How much did the gay guy's daughter look like Jenna Jameson when she put in the fake teeth? Uh, oh, my that God. Kid, no. I, when she popped those teeth in and she's pursing her lips and making like kissing thing, I'm looking going, effing porn star. They dress their little girl up like a porn star. That's a friggin' money shot face. Well, okay, you know, that was a bizarre story, too, because the girl you're talking about, the, the, real, like, the real father, uh -huh. he looked like he was dating Martin Short. Oh, I know. They all live together. Oh, they didn't explore that. But it how's that for a topper? Oh, but it looks like the guy uh, figured out he really likes men. He has his daughter. He's he's living with his uh, boyfriend. Yeah, and his daughter's in these pageants. How about the sick bastard that sings to the girls? Oh, yeah. we into we have that. Oh my God! There's so much to get into, but yeah, there's a part of uh, the competition where they line up all the girls, and this was uh, the the category Swan was in, so it was like the five and six year old uh, category. They all look like little baby whores, right? Right, with the fake hair extensions and the the dresses and the makeup, like we uh, went over. And then there's a guy; he has to be in his like mid twenties at least. Yeah. Singing to the girls like uh, they would sing to Miss America. Yeah. And talking about, you know, you're, you're the you're you're the love of my life. With it's a love song. Oh, little ass. Right. And your non-existent boobies. Oh, we got it. <laughs> Here it is. Is this the song? Yeah. <laughs> the date I finally found my line this is deeply disturbing to me that right there is a crime that is a crime that's soliciting like sex or sexual content or something from a, a minor and parents encouraging this kid to flaunt with the friggin moron kid toucher that's singing the song that's twisted because the kids have no effing idea what they did you flirt with them uh, yeah, yeah, I whipped out my hair, uh, hairless peach. <laughs> and uh, what do you want me to do? You want me to take it up the keister? I mean, what? They're pimping out their kids. 24-7, Opie. Okay. <laughs> Trisha, what's going on? <laughs> hey, that's the part I wanted to talk about. That was the sickest thing I've ever seen in my life, when he was teaching her how to flirt with a guy. Yeah. And then he, did. Him. he was like me after a couple of drinks. He knew exactly how to flirt with that disgusting singer guy, too. You <laughs> after a couple of drinks. <laughs> I mean, it looked like they're teaching their daughters their whore moves that they learned at the local gin mill when they were uh, getting banged uh, often. <laughs> Thanks, guys. You suck. All right. Thank you. Oh. We have the audio where the guy, uh, his whole job is to uh, train these little girls for these pageants. Yeah. He's basically telling them one to flirt with the judges. Oh, my Mr. God. Tim, he's singing to you. Da -da -da, da -da -da. That's your judges. That's my girl. And da -da -da. look at look at why he's singing to you. La -da 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 -da. Makes my kid about somebody. And then and then you're you're one of my oldest one, and you and I want you to kind of well, what do you, I want you to be flirty with him. Yeah, you can do it. That's it. Yeah, because she starts making the eyes and, like, looking over her shoulder at him. And it's a kid. Oh, my God. Yeah. Let me go to uh, Katie. Katie, you're next on WNEW. Hello. Hey. Hey, what's up? What's up, Katie? Um, I saw that show last night. What white trash. Yep. I just oh don't, I don't, I don't see that going on up here at all. 
Did you say the beginning? I don't know if you caught this. The mother's sitting there, and she's talking to the camera. The kids are screaming in the background, like, Mom, they picked me up, feed me, do something with me. Yeah, yeah, the, you hear the kids screaming. That's, that's a great gig that kid touch your singer's got, huh? Singing to a little kid with a, in an auditorium that probably smells like pee, diaper, and crap. Oh, that's awful. I love the 85-year-old boyfriend, too. Yeah, the boyfriend oh, yeah. was... Uh, oh, my God. Yeah, well, she was just using him. That's like her sugar daddy. There was like a trash house. They had one car. She didn't want to talk about the relationship with that, that older graying guy. She, she was just using him for his car so, uh, so she could drive uh, the kids to all these pageants all over the South. He's like, oh, Bubba ran away. Bubba went to jail. Yeah, and one of her kids is in jail at 14 years old. Yeah, the kid's name is Bubba. Bubba. Scott wants to know... Um, <laughs> when Mr. Tim, Tim started saying, get your balls out. <laughs> get your balls out. It's today. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ, that is horrid. The guy looked like, like a Martin Short character from SNL. Oh, oh, yeah. I'm like, this guy cannot be for real. He was so gay, I think he was straight. Like, he went all the way around the gay... Completely around? He went around the gay thing. Where he just snapped back, and he's manlier than any manly man ever. Because no one can be that gay. <laughs> Get your balls out! <laughs> Clap your ass up! Clap your scrotum! It's the day! I was very happy, and it was birthday! And it's not even for the July! <laughs> oh, God damn! Turn it off! <laughs> Carolyn, what's going on? Hey, yeah, um, I had seen this, I think maybe it was last year on PBS or A&E. It, was, it, it wasn't an HBO documentary originally, so, I, so I've seen it twice now. So I couldn't turn it off. I was just fascinated last night. And those two guys are so frightening because it, it's only their people that apparently are winning. So they ought, they've got something over on the judges or the judges only pick well, those, top awards for... Those, guys, those two guys... Um, they like run that circuit. It yeah, seems. Yeah, but uh, just about every single uh, baby that's in in uh, in that uh, pageant circuit is trained by them. Because they, oh. they said something like three to four hundred girls are trained by them. Ugh. Oh. <laughs> Should I sit down? It's a huge money-making scheme for them. It's like they finally yeah. give Swan's mother some money, and you know she's giving it right back to them for more coaching. Yeah, you see the the house they were living in while uh, the, uh, Swan's mom is living in some kind of crack den house in Fort Myers. Yeah. And she wants her daughter to get a taste of that good life, so she'll want it more, so she'll work harder. Yeah. All right, Carol. Thank you. <coughs> no, it's okay. Come on now. Make your eyes. Make eyes at the judge. Make. Oh, they haven't opened yet? Okay. No, that's okay. You look hot. You look sexy. All right, stick your butt out. Someone wipe it because there's baby crap all over it. Go ahead. Come on. It's okay. No, it's okay. Flirt. Flirt, you little bitch. <laughs> Two words, John Bonet. Yeah. Well, the one looked just like John Bonet. Swan. That show was nothing more than legalized kitty porn and the veil of a beauty contest. It was. It was beyond twisted. You could tell how John Bonet was like a front runner in those whole things, though, because all the kids look like little John Bonets now. Right. They try to look like him. I think my uh, wife's uh, been born. Oh, was she on the uh, runway somewhere? <laughs> <laughs> that girl Swan didn't want to do that crap. Remember when she wanted to stop the pageants so her mom could stop working so much? So what's white trash bitch do? Get a third job. You know what? They should have explored the type of jobs the mom's getting. Oh, yeah. I think she's uh, bowing for... What's the line? Uh, B jobs. What's bobbing for dignity. Bob, she's definitely bobbing for dignity, as Norton would say. It's just horrible. And you can tell these women, are they're all the same friggin' mold. They come from the same mold. They uh, they grew up. They they white trash. They never amounted to squat. So now they got to put all this pressure on their little kids and dress them up like little hose bags and porn stars to uh, get attention for themselves. It's like that Munchausen by proxy syndrome thing where, where they poison the kids to try to get attention. It's the same thing, but only it's, it's dress them up like a little whore. And, and it's a no-win situation because Swan and her mom, yeah, and Swan is like a front runner. She's won a lot of pageants and stuff. Yeah. Uh, she, she won the big one at the end of this special last night and won $2,500. Uh -huh. And then it flashes on the screen a little graphic that says Swan's mom has spent well over 70000 yeah. on these pageants. It's so they're different. never going to make, uh, you know, any, any money doing this. It just has to do with these women. It's the women. The kid doesn't, you think the kid goes, I want to be in a beauty pageant? No, the mother's like, I'm all, you such a pretty girl. 
and around the, the whole uh, white trash trailer park, everybody says what a pretty little girl you are. So I'm going to put you in this kind of, Mommy, I don't want to, you're going to put that whore makeup on. And yeah. like, it, you're right, it's probably for the mom's self-esteem. Of course it is, because now they got something to talk about. they got something, my little girl done won the contest. Give me another Scott, Scott, damn it. Why don't we take a break? We have a lot more clips to play from the special in case you missed it. Yeah. Everyone's on hold wants to talk about it. Stay there. We'll get to a lot of your phone calls next. 212-757-1027. Opie and Anthony. Two hungry sharks in a world of unlimited halibut. 1027 WNEW. Radio is a commercial business. And you have to do what people want. It's a lot of crap. We don't do traffic. We don't do weather. We no. do nothing. Did you just say I'm purple again? That's it. It's like the worst radio on the planet. Yes, yes. we know. OB and Anthony Show. We're so late. New Weezer in. That's right. Weezer's album is out tomorrow, as well as Tool's album. We gave away a few copies of the two albums earlier. Right now, what are we doing, Ann? We're talking about the baby beauty pageant thing that was on FX Sopranos on HBO and how uh, despicable these anyone involved in these things are. It's like a little kitty porn ring that they're running. Um, it's not like at a county fair or a local town has a, an event where they have, like, the cutest girl contest or something, and they look like girls, and which is still demented and twisted, and you shouldn't make kids compete like that. But this is a... Let's dress little girls up like women, like whore women, parade them around with whore moves, and uh, then uh, pick a winner. As as men uh, gawk at them like pedophiles, and as women uh, trying to make up for their own inadequacies in life, they uh, parade these girls around and just torture them to try to get something into their life that uh, they never had. I need to hear from someone today that will explain why this is okay. Because I was just watching last night, I was blown away. I'm like. This is a, this is sick. Well, the instant feedback exploding. Uh, one guy, the only thing more revolting than the white trash parents and the raging queen coaches, uh, who really want to either be little girls themselves or spend the day playing princess dress up, <laughs> was the slimy MC who was singing love songs to the prepubescents, all the while measuring them for shallow graves and strangulation. Uh, then Dan from Hoboken checking in. Just think, Swan's mother probably used to listen to Mad Matt. <laughs> down there. Well, they were from the Fort Myers area, and that's where Rick did some radio. Dude, how scary. I, I'm watching this thing. I missed the first five minutes where it said where it was from. Mm -hmm. So I'm just watching, and they show the outside of the house, and they show it all barren. I'm looking at it going, God damn, that's Cape Coral. I knew right off the bat exactly where the hell it sure. was. Uh, Dre from uh, Brooklyn, did you notice that one of the homos were fitting Swan with a dress? The blonde guy grabbed her right in the crotch. Oh, I saw that. And then rubbed his hand on her chest. Yeah, he wasn't happy with the seam. With the seam. <laughs> I swear to God. There's barely a seam there. Oh, you're talking about the uh, clothes. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. He wasn't happy with the seam in front of uh nice in the front seam. There. Mimi. Hello. 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 Yeah, what's up? You're on the air. First of all, that thing last night was like a train wreck. I couldn't keep my eyes off of it. Yeah. The only one it was what is it about those southern states that it's all they do is want beauty pageants and dress their kids up? They're backwards. I don't They're get retarded. it. Hearted. Well, because uh, there's a lot of white trash. The moms have uh, low self-esteem issues. All I wanted to do and was since watch they were getting girl pounded face. at uh, 12 years old or whatever it was, hanging out at the bars drinking moonshine with their uncle touching them. You know they don't see a problem with it. Isn't it child abuse? What you say? I did, oh, yeah. It, it was so sick. I'm, I can't believe they're not shutting these things down. <laughs> because the kids are like, uh, even Swan's like, oh, Mommy, I don't want to do it anymore. And she's like, you're doing it until you get it right. You're doing it because you ain't no quitter. Give me another goddamn drink. It, it was twisted to see the girls at, like, the beauty parlor or whatever you call it down there getting hair extensions. They don't and, look And nice. their hair getting dyed and stuff. Well, did you see they put mascara on that little boy? Yeah. Oh, the mullet guy? Mullet head. The little <laughs> mullet kid. You, you got, that tells you right there where this is happening. He wins the beauty king thing, and he's got the mini mullet. Mini mullet. Mini mullet. Yeah. Joe Dirt's kid. Yeah. <laughs> Joe Dirt. Little Joey Dirt. All right. All right. Uh, Umby, uh, Umby, checking in. Did you see uh, Martin Short? 
the Martin Short guy dancing in front of the little four-year-old girl to show her the routine. I laughed my balls off. Yeah, he does this whole routine that is so complicated. Even, like, a, a girl in her 20s would have a tough time following following the guy. I know, and she's just looking like, well, I want to play. Yeah, where's Blue's Clues? Did you notice that when they were uh, dolling the girls up, one woman said, oh, I hear she looks like Jean Bonnet or Barbie doll. Mm -hmm. Jesus, a choice between an inanimate object and a dead girl. Something's wrong here. <laughs> Brian, what's going on? Yeah, that woman last night. Yeah. You ever know she had the same shirt on every scene they showed? Well, she was a, yeah, she was just a drunken slob. Like every seven months, oh, same black t-shirt. Right. Yeah, well, how so, about the, because they're spending every cent on the little girl. Go how ahead. about that guy? Goes to the airport, right? She puts the car to the airport, next thing you can see is Steve was at the airport. What are you, taking bike? Yeah, all right. Thank yeah, you, guys. I blew that one, sorry. That's all right. We got some audio of the mom from last night's show on HBO. Yeah. Here's Swan's mom. The one hand, you're supposed to be this nurturing mother figure, and the other hand, you're going to kick their ass. And it's, it's tough coming from the same individual. But we've managed, I think, to make it work fairly well here. It is a hard thing to do. Do you wish it was different? No. Not in the way. I'm the best dad I know. Yeah, the, uh, big surprise, the father's nowhere to be seen. Jeez. Yeah, I know. Most of these, uh, there were there were boyfriends, there were stepfathers. She's part of the uh, husband of the month club. <laughs> Here's Danny. Danny, what's going on? Yo. Yo. You see that with that kid, that little boy, they put the eye makeup on him, and the mother's looking at the kid all so proud and everything. She's destined to raise a little fag over there. Yeah. Yeah. And then there's one part where that swan is running away with that little boy, and the mother's yelling at swan, don't you go after that little boy? Yeah, because she's already flirting with other little boys and holding yeah. her hands. Uh, it was sick, man. It was so sick. There's another little part where she's telling swan in the hallway, do the routine, and swan says, Mommy, give me a kiss. So she gives her a kiss, and she says, Mommy, give me a hug. She's not until you get the routine right. Get it right. Get it right. You got to get it right. You want affection. You want Mommy to love you. You got to do it all, baby. That's right. right. It's so sick. I mean, it was repulsive, man. Swan's mother couldn't afford a car, so she had a whole friggin' stage built in the garage. Remember that? Mm -hmm. She had a stage built, and she'd have her kid go out to the garage as her 14-year-old uh, half-brother would sit there and gawk at her ass. It was, it's, it, it was so skeevy to watch. Matter of fact, here's a song Swan was practicing in the in the garage. Oh, good. Let's uh, let's. Some parts were worse. You've got to keep your voice the same level throughout the whole song. The kid. Try it again. One more time. Then we'll switch to the next one. You hear the mom? She's already... You can, you can tell she's sauce. I just got yeah. listening to that. that. That girl's five years old singing. Wow, wow, wow. Don't raise your voice. Like, do you like having your background? Tim, what's going on? Guys, you are so right. I didn't watch the whole thing, but I watched the one part... And it said on the bottom of the, of the screen, you know, so and so spent twelve hundred dollars on a designer dress. Yeah, a uh, used uh, dress. A used mom. dress, right? She can't. Yeah. She doesn't have a car, but she's spending twelve hundred dollars so that you know the her little girl looks more like a, a little whore princess for these pageants. But even that, she could use it on her teeth. Oof. I mean, if you saw it like the cartoons when they used to bite on the metal pipes and all the teeth would fall out, right? That's what they look like. Right on. But Anthony Anthony hit another good point real quick. Where do the fathers go? I mean, these kids, how did such fugly mothers have these kids? Yeah, we said that. I earlier. mean, Jesus. And then the faggy trainer, like, oh, it'll point your feet this way. And he's, like, throwing his arms out. like, oh, please. Well, who knows what these moms looked like when they were kids. I mean, obviously, they've been ridden hard and put up wet. You know what I mean? They're, like, they, they've just been run through the mill of, of booze and abusive guys and stuff and, and they, their own problems and their own mistakes they've made through life. No, they try to make up for it by taking their little kid and dressing them like whores. Lovely. Here's another clip from last night. This one's disturbing. Oh, and no. the others were a treat? No, this is, this is, this is, 
All right, this is that, uh, right? Do you want your star earrings? Little lucky star earrings? No, I don't want them. What happens tonight if you don't wear them and your team loses because of it? Huh? I don't want them. Okay, but if they lose, it's on you. And you have a big responsibility, don't you? Put your hand down. Don't you? I want them. Wow. Oh, boy. Wow. If, if that, if she's not setting up her daughter to be like, you know, knocked up at 14 and on crack by 16. Kokua. This wow. guy wants to defend the pageants. Oh, yeah. Mark, what could you possibly say to us? First of all, it's not as bad as, like, as you guys are all making it out to be. Making it out. We're just playing the clips. We're not. I apologize. I apologize. I'll let you get your opinion out, but don't curse. I apologize. All right. Why? I'm just lying, man. I know I'd it. Rather have a... I know it. There's nobody that you're going to find in New York that defends these things. If we were uh, down in uh, Bama, forget about it. Karen, what's going on? Hi, guys. How you doing? Good. Uh, the woman before that said it was like a train wreck, it was right. The, the more you watched it, the further my mouth was just hanging open. I, I can't believe this woman can't afford a car. They're having macaroni and cheese for Thanksgiving. Her son's in jail, and she's spending $70,000 on beauty pageants. For her five-year-old for, for daughter. For five-year-old. Yeah. It's her Talk drug. About, like, you know, you could start your kids' education. You could, you know, give your kids the proper tools that they're not going to grow up to be white trash that the parents are. Why get an education when uh, your your daughter can be a, a nice little whore and uh, be like her mom? No, no, it's the sickest part. The whole thing was sick, but the sickest for me is when they had the zero to eighteen month category, and they 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 announced the winner of it, and uh, the girl the little girl couldn't have been more than four or five months, maybe six. Yeah. Maybe maybe six months old, okay? And they're holding her up in front of the judges. She just won, and they're putting all the stuff on her in the crown. And the mom is just freaking out, so excited. Yeah. The little kid doesn't even know it's alive yet. I know. And it's and and she's all in makeup, and her hair's done. That was so effing sick. Thing. Well, did you notice that all the mothers were about three hundred pounds? They were fat, disgusting slobs who never probably had a guy look twice in their direction growing up, and they're starting their kids in these pageants, you know, I guess trying to live vicariously through their four-year-old. How sick is that? That's what they're doing, yeah. You know, and this swan girl, you know, they should do a follow-up story 10 years from now because I guarantee she's going to be living in a trailer park with two kids on welfare, and she's going to be an alcoholic. This, this poor kid, that, that woman should be shot. They're telling the girls to flirt with the judges. They're five years old. Five. Flirt. You flirt, girl. Uh, flirt. Make that, sure you make eye contact. That look good. That MC that was singing to those girls, I, I, if I had a daughter and that guy came within 10 feet of my child, I, I would probably kill him. It's the most disgusting thing I've ever seen. All right, was okay. there, was there um, one black contestant in any of those shows? No. Say. No. It's not only uh, bad for the kids, it's racist. Jimmy! Jimmy! Hey, Jimmy! Speak. Oh, well. We lost him. We have somebody here that wants to defend the uh, beauty pageants. What's uh, what's your name? <laughs> <laughs> Here's another clip from last night. And do not scrub on the floor. Listen to me. Oh. You're going to have a headset on. Anything noise you make, the headset will pick up. Do not make noise. One, don't do that. I'll start me again. Don't make noise. I just want to punch oh, you want this to, lady in the teeth. Don't you want to smack her? The poor kid. Let her play. Uh, Matt, what's up? Uh, how you doing? I just want to uh, point out how many times that uh, Martin Short character said, you go, girl, throughout this whole uh, program. Yeah. About a hundred times. That guy, yeah. Oh, yeah. That guy was so wrong on so many levels. He's just a big fag, you know. And, That's it. And his boyfriend that has, like, a daughter in the pageant, he does all the makeup and... 
the hair extensions. Right. And they never. They, I guess they never addressed that. What, what that relationship all was. Yeah, that was really bad. All right, Matt. I think we're just about done. Is there any other really good clips we want to play? We have about fifty clips from the show, but you guys can just watch it for yourself. Uh, Lewis. This is by far the most disturbing thing I think I've ever heard on your show. And the funniest thing is it that it's Lewis reality. Yeah. It's reality. I mean, Anthony hit it right on the head. This is a crime. Hit him on the head. Yeah. Sorry. What? This is this is a crime. I mean, this these call? parents are. <laughs> <laughs> What's that, Lewis? Hey, Sorry. We, we need some comedy today. <laughs> Comedy relief. All right, Lewis. Thank you. Talk to you, Mike. Yeah, it'd be so easy just to. It'd be so easy just to completely make fun of and goof on this, but it's just we have to go the other way. It's just. I know. It's it was so beyond wrong. twisted. To sit and watch it, you just want to smack the mother in the face. Here's Shane and Michael, the, two of the guys that train all the. Oh, great. All the pet, all the little girls. Oh, if you had a daughter that you wanted to compete in pageants, she would bring her to us, and we would get her ready from head to toe. Her modeling, her pictures, her hair, her makeup. Everything, her wardrobe, that's what we do. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Oh. We've had girls over the years that were just literally butt ugly. I'm being serious. And well, we the take, truth. it's the truth. And it I take the them, truth. I say, take their eyebrows <laughs> off, put eyelashes on them, put hair, contour here, contour here. I'm talking and black out the nose, yeah, the nose and is they're black. beautiful. And, you know, you know, and when you get them on stage and the spotlight hits them, which, you know, like so you said, what I'm saying, I can take a, an ugly girl and make her beautiful. You know, you can't without me. <laughs> oh, my God, oh, Jesus. Uh, Mike, what's going on? Hey, guys, what's going on? Hey. Uh, first, I want to say, I watched some of the show last night. I couldn't really watch all of it. It was really, really disturbing. I couldn't turn it off. Could uh, not turn it off. I was just mesmerized. Yeah. I have uh, I have two little boys, two and a half and one and a half, and I think that's why it really bothered me so much. I had to turn it off. Yeah. Um, so I just want to know if any of you guys noticed um, first, let me say, I used to, uh, I used to buy drugs on the street level for the city of New York as a cop. And, uh, a couple of instances, they showed you the mom when she had her t-shirt on, a famous black t-shirt. The light shone across her arms and you could see on her forearms scars that used to be track marks where she used to shoot up. Yeah, we I wouldn't know if anyone, if anyone noticed that. I, I wouldn't doubt it because when we were watching this again in the back office, we were trying to figure out what she was on. We could tell she's a boozer and we were trying to figure yeah. out if it was crack or a little H or yeah. something. She's done a lot more than just, just drinking. She's really hard. She's, yeah. really, uh, she's really worn out. Oof. Right on. All right, Mike. A lot, of, a lot of city miles on her. Thank you. City miles. Take care. Yeah. Have a good day. Another clip of the mom. All right. Everything I do revolves around these kids. Absolutely everything, you know, from getting Bubba out of jail and trying to figure out what his problem is. And then Silva, you know, and her her boyfriends or her school or her dance or, you know, what have you, her job. Just one pageant. Maybe your maybe your son's problem, trying to figure out what his problem is. Maybe you're drunk off your ass and you give all the attention in the wrong way to the daughter and her parent uh, pageant. Yeah, she's not home. Oh, what an effed up family that is. Working three jobs, probably giving guys hummers ugh, to pay for uh you know, the travel expenses for these pageants for a little little five year old. Yo man, I will suck you. Yeah. <laughs> you know what should happen? What? Should get Matt and Trey on the phone? Yeah. They should do a South Park episode of that. Oh, the beauty pageant thing? Oh, Wouldn't that be great? Without a doubt. Yeah, that would be. They would just twist it in such a way it would be quite humorous. <laughs> uh, here's another clip. All right. Warm. Eat something. Clothes are going to be falling off of you. No. Yeah, they will. Why? Because you don't eat enough, that's why. You're always going to weigh 26 pounds. Well, maybe you got it in her head that she's got to look thin and tiny and... You could hear she's drunk. She okay. she's slurring a word. Listen to this tape of her, and then grab a tape of me doing a live read Friday. <laughs> All right, and I defy you to tell the difference. <laughs> All right, I guess we could end with the. Uh, no, let's end with. Oh, all right. All right, all right yeah, because I want to play the, uh, the Miss America song with the five year old ah. thing, to end this whole segment. Hey, let's take her, right? Right? What's gonna happen when you do that on stage? You go look at some other kids. Tell me, I want to hear it. Bye bye, right? Judges are here. Right here. Look at me. Now look there. Now look back at me. Turn your head. Turn your head. 
You know, if ever I saw a kid that looked a lot, it's you. Holy ass. Oh. Punch this well, Mom, seat. you know, uh, I'm going to punch you in your sea let's in send, a second. Let's send Stinky to uh, f the Fort Myers area to find this bitch. Jill. Yeah, I just had a quick observation about the show last night. Yeah. If you notice uh, Shane and Michael's place where they're doing all the makeup, mm -hmm. a little bit like a mini uh, Playboy mansion with the girls swimming in the pool doing makeup in the other room. That's a great observation. It's like a Playboy mansion. It's mini Playboy mansion. Yeah, that's yeah. true. He had, he had all the little girls in the pool and stuff. Some were getting their pictures done. Some were getting makeup done. You're right. Some were yeah. practicing dance moves in one of the rooms in the house. All right. I, 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 just, all right. Uh, I just popped up a page. It's um, the Sugar and Spice page. For the girls, there's a 2001 Sugar and Spice calendar. Calendar girls, Opie. Look at, look at this. Look at these girls. Oh, there, it's the, the pageant girls. And on the front of this uh, homepage here, if I go back, I see Mr. Tim. Huh? Look, the guy that did the singing. Oh, the guy that uh, sung the, the love song to the girls. We are again honored to open this year's events with the spectacular Mr. Tim as Master of Ceremonies. What a captivating appearance uh, as he serenaded our beautiful delegates. Thank you, Mr. Tim. And look at Miss Ashley. Miss M <laughs> <laughs> Might as well be Miss May. <laughs> this is disgusting. Miss Minnie May. Hey, there's a message board. Want to get the site out? Yeah, without a doubt. All right. It is uh, www.geocities.com. And you know how much traffic Geocities can handle. <laughs> Geocities.com slash sugar and spice pageant. Sugar and spice pageant. That's all you got to put in. Geocities.com slash sugar and spice pageant. And I hope you know how to spell pageant. It's P-A-G-E-A-N-T. They know how to spell it. We're not from the South. There you go. Tommy! Oh. Hey, man. How are you guys doing? I said that because I didn't know how to spell it, so I just saw it open. Okay. <laughs> Tommy! Yeah? Go ahead, man. All right, look, my sister does this up here in Jersey, man. Oh, yeah? Oh, you know what? Ah, I knew that was going to happen. Tommy! Tommy! <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they have uh, one of those down in Jersey, Little Miss America, I think they call it. Something like that. All right. Well, it's just awful. Here's, if you get a chance, check it out. Here's five-year-old Swan singing Miss America. times on HBO. Yeah, yeah. There you have it. All right, we'll get into a few more things, Anthony. All right. <laughs> we don't want to say, turn it off. Turn it off. Um. Oh, yeah, we got to get into Robert Blake next. We have to get into, um. Uh, yeah, Rudy, the mayor. Rudy. And what the hookers are doing these days yeah. in Midtown. Uh -huh. Hilarious stuff on the way. Obi, you guys are God and Anthony. Wait two minutes. We'll say something really dumb. 
Pinnacle Monkey 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 Yes. We know that works. They also have a product called Pinnacle Monkeying Around for the ladies. That's for the chicks. Yeah. The horny people of Pinnacle, makers of horny goat weed, now have Pinnacle Monkeying Around for the women. Fan the flames of passion naturally with the potent blend of all natural exotic herbs, including that legendary monkey Taekwon Yin. That's right. Monkey Taekwon Yin. Pinnacle's been around for years. It's the exciting herbal spark that's going to reignite the passion in your life. It's from the all-famous now... Fukin Province of China. Opie, you been there? I'm going on vacation in the Fukin Province of China. Next uh, vacation we got. Nice. Yeah. So for great romance sex, remember the three P's, pleasure, passion, and of course, Pinnacle. Pinnacle monkeying around. Available at GNC and other fine health food stores. Or you can call them 1-800-899-5323. 1-800-899-5323. When it's time to get funky, what do you do? And reach for the monkey? Yes. Hey, and your mom did say I was hot. Come on, Mom, don't bang, Opie. You my mom, I'll yours. Oh, so I say lay back and enjoy it. The hell of a toboggan ride. Opie, yeah, that's A couple of real mother... 1027 WNEW. It's O, it's A. 212-757-1027 is our phone number. Bunch of people writing in, Anthony. Yes, they got their copy of Brill's uh, content in the mail. Yeah, I guess if you subscribe, it comes early. It'll be on newsstands, I think, sometime this week. We're featured in the June issue. Right. We're very happy with the article. Hope you read it. We'll talk about it when more people get to read it, because there's a lot of stuff to goof on in yeah. the article. That's for sure. All right, we got to move on with other things today. Yeah, I was just laughing uh, during uh, commercials. Huh, the fun and hijinks happening over there at um, Gracie Mansion. Ha! Oh. And I bow to you today because you uh, you hit this one on the on the head. Yeah. Uh, you said a long time ago that the reason why the mayor is doing what he's doing to this city is because mm -hmm. he's not having sex. He, he even went sex. on and said that he's infinite. You said that six to eight months ago. Well, when they talk about the uh, prostate cancer that he has and the treatment that he chose, um, yeah, it could leave you sexually impotent. Limp D, whiskey D, whatever you want to call it. It's a limp, limp D. The guy has not had sex in at least a year. Now, who knows what was going on before that? Do you think he at least has like a dribbler? Nothing, dude. Just nothing. He is sexually impotent. He is not had any. You know how crazy that drives a guy? That's why his beluga whale head fired so big, it's backing up with G. <laughs> <laughs> he's having trouble, this guy. And his uh, the treatment he's taking for his prostate cancer? Can't use Viagra. No. Forget Viagra. Rudy, Gi Rudy Giuliani can't take the love drug for his impotence because his prostate cancer drug have uh, killed his sex drive, experts say. Hasn't had sex in over a year. Yep, that's it. For the past year, his honor has been impotent because he's been taking uh, Lupron and uh, Casadex, two drugs that eliminate the male sex hormone testosterone, which produce uh, which uh, prostate cancer cells feed. All right? So it's blocking his sex drive. Oh, my God. You read all the details in the Sunday paper about how he's, like, living in a guest room in, in the mansion? Yeah. Or occasionally he goes over his chick's house. Like the ex-wife's got, you know, run of the place with the kids. She's got run of the house, yeah. Uh, he's in a guest room most of the time. And then, you know, because of all these treatments, he's staying up all night in pain and stuff. Yeah. And, and, and his ex-wife knows that. And, and I guess uh, right above where he's sleeping is where she works out. Yeah. So she'll start working out at like 5 in the morning. Oh, yeah. Oh, what? A, this is an unbelievable story. It's so many levels. And you know something? The, the mayor wanted to uh, get a, a gag order. He said last week sometime, he said, oh, I can't talk about things because there's a gag order. Well, there wasn't a gag order. Uh, so then they went to court and signed it. So then there was a gag order. Now, uh, Hanover there, Donna Hanover, had it overturned. So there's no gag order. So then they come out and say, hey, this guy has been sexually impotent for a year. 
Like now they're starting to throw the mud. I love it. God, tell they're throwing the mud. Tell me uh, the mayor doesn't want to do like a you know a Tony Soprano one on his ex now. <sighs> Strangler. Ralph Felder, Giuliani's divorce lawyer, uh, said uh, she's like a, a little kid who killed her parents and then complains that she's an orphan. She's squealing like a pig. <laughs> that's, what she, that's what they're saying about her. Now, let's see. What happened there? Um, Giuliani's sport utility vehicle was outside good friend Judy Nathan's apartment on 3rd Avenue in Manhattan. The SUV loaded with luggage pulled into the building's garage. So I guess maybe he's staying with her or they're going away or something? Moving in, maybe. And what's with this Judy Nathan? She hasn't had any sex with somebody else for uh, a year? Is that it? Maybe Rudy chews the rug. Oh, you've got to do something, right? you got to keep your chick happy, Opie, right? So even if he can't do it, let me show you some of the talents I have. I'm quite a cunning linguist, <laughs> is what I say. I'm a crumpet muncher. Oh, imagine that. Yeah, I'll start on your neck, and I'll drool on your boobies for a while. Now I'm just gonna yes, yes. It looks like a it looks like a big volleyball in your lap when you look down on me. But remember, I can please my chick, and I have no sex drive, so I don't need reciprocation. Nothing like that. I'll just. That's good. That's good. How does he even show his head in public? <laughs> and he doesn't make testosterone anymore. So, like, what? Are you, he's got to be taken. Does that mean he's he's growing man boobs? Well, he's got What what happens if you don't start? They keep producing the male hormones that keep they keep your beard growing. They keep you know keep you from getting the boobs. They keep your um they keep your uh, 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 sack from shriveling up to nothing. And there's Rudy now. Gonna be a little chick. I'm a biatch. Oh. So then he goes over her house, and I guess he's gotta take care of business. But he doesn't have any sex drive either. Could you imagine that? I I I think I'd rather die. It kind of pisses me off because I would hope the guy would have a sex drive and not be able to do anything with it. But it's, it looks like he doesn't even have the urge. So it's like, oh, let me just screw around with New York a little more. So you mean to say like he sees this girl that he. he he thinks it's hot. Yeah, picture that. He's driving along right. a hot chick going down the street. And let's say now this girl's naked. It, it, it's got to do something to you. Nothing. Come on. Does nothing to him now. No way. Nothing. And think of how much time is spent let's get by a man looking and thinking about sex. I I would say 20 hours oh, a day. So now cancel, yeah. <laughs> cancel all that out. There's a lot of free time. Because I know my dreaming's at least four hours of that. And he's pissed off that other guys get turned on by this. So that's why he's trying to get rid of strip clubs. Can and we talk to a, an impotent guy? Because I want to know. That something has to happen, even if you're impotent. If you're looking at a hot girl on the street or a naked girl on the street. It what all happens? depends. If you're impotent because the stuff doesn't work like that. I'm talking guy, nothing. Nothing. Just somebody. Okay, let's talk to somebody that has no sex drive. Whether it's medication or whatever. He doesn't even if you see a naked girl. Does nothing. But that's what they're saying, Giuliani. Our own black girl is stepping in. Earl, Earl, what's that like? <laughs> uh, let's go to Kevin. Kevin, what's going on? Imagine Giuliani with a strap on with this chick. Oh, oh my God. Imagine what that would look like. See you guys later. Keep the show going. I have a piece of limp linguine here. But what I'm going to do is get a strap on. But I'm going to read while I'm doing it. I'll I'll hump away, but I'll read because I'm not interested. I'll give you a reach around with one hand. Turn the pages with the other. Oh God! I'll just well I'll wet my finger and use it to turn the page. This works out for everything. Mm. Let me just okay. Turn the page. <laughs> turn the page. Turn the page. Turn the page. Turn the page. The medications don't work. That's right, Giuliani. They don't. I can't have sex. That's why he wanted the voyeur bus taken away. It did nothing for him. What does uh, the mayor say when he uh, unzips his pants and looks down his underwear? Nothing works here. <laughs> the medications don't work. Yeah, poor bastard. I hate this thing. <laughs> it doesn't 
doesn't work. Oh, God. <laughs> that's, that's horrible. It really is. But you know something? The guy's been a prick. What justice? He's been a prick now. It doesn't work. <laughs> Yeah, you taste that, Biatch. Hmm. Let me see. I'm a bad mother f***er. Lord Tomo. Let me see. Mm-hmm. The choice. Mm. That's right. I'm Rudy G. I'm here to say. My hair looks like a roadkill toupee. I'm the number one man in NYC. So why are all the homeboys so pissed at me? I'm the R to the U to the D to the Y. A bad mother f***er makes the food vendors cry. Mm-hmm. Get the cars off the streets, you goddamn immigrants. <laughs> That's right. That's right. I'm a bad mother f***er. Close the strip clubs and porno stores. I don't care. The cops bring my whores. Take on Al and Sarah Can. I'm plenty f***ing tough for a skinny white man. So squeegee guy trying to turn a buck. Get yourself a job, you lazy f***. Yeah, I'm the mayor man. I'm number one. I got a frigid wife and a big fat son. Don't give me no s*** about Hillary. That fat ass bitch ain't no better than me. I can't bother with the homeless and sick. All the motherfuckers can suck my d- I'm Rudy G. Yeah, I'm Rudy G, motherfucker. The listing mayor, Rudy G, Lord Come over to the motherfuckers in my house. Word. Word. Let's go to Edward, who says he's uh, impotent like the, the mayor there. Edward. Uh, hello. Edward. Yes, how are you doing? Is this real? This is very, very real. All right, why? He had the same treatment he's had, and uh, it's just uh, no sex drive. No sex what, drive. Whatsoever. So when you see a hot chick on the street, do you look and go, yeah? I sure do, but it's just like uh, it's like touching the moon. You just can't. You hear where I'm coming from? But what's the feeling you get? It's like a sudden. It's like a volcano that just capped. You know. Yeah, but I mean, you see the girl. Let's say she's even naked. You understand she's hot and stuff, right? Of course. Does it drive you nuts that you can't do anything, or you? It drives me over the top. It just completely dry. I have different types of orgasms now. It's sort of like, you know, penetrate my, my uh, innermost pituitary gland and just like explode in there. <laughs> Dude, what are you talking about? That's like the growth <laughs> gland at the base of your brain. Why would that have anything to do because with it? Because the sex drive. Maybe because you like guys. <laughs> I don't know. Like, that's your, that's like has nothing to do with sex. If you knew anything about medical terminology, you would know that the sex drive begins at the pituitary gland. <laughs> Shut up. You know, You're such a tool, my friend. I, I'm telling you the facts. You so take lying. out an encyclopedia, uh, Britannica. An, an encyclopedia Britannica. What an idiot. In the pituitary gland. We can never get serious on this show. I know. We try. It's kind of frustrating. I really want to know what the feeling is. When oh, be, yeah. I, I hate to go back to, the, to this quickly, but I'm just checking out the Sugar and Spice uh, message board. Yeah, explain really fast. Cause, yeah, well, that show that was on HBO featuring the uh, young beauty contestants like uh, Jean Benet Ramsey was in. Well, there's a website dedicated to this, and we showed our. Uh, uh, we told our listeners where the, the message board was for this, the, the guest book. And they've been posting some very, very fun things. This is the website that has the calendar of all the little girls yeah. looking like little hoes. Little five-year-old girls dressed like whores. Okay. And these people have no problem with this. Uh, I found a jellyfish in the tub this morning. I can't see how my daddy missed it during his shower. From Ashley and Mary Kate. Michael Hunt checking in, but using his short name, Mike. Mike. Uh, do you like having your back rubbed? <laughs> You're a kid toucher. Gay Marco, can I get Mr. Tim's number? Horny Goat, we checking in with my balls ache. That's all he's saying. Well, I would like to give the kids rusty trombones. We're touching kids here on CBS FM. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is legal, isn't it? By Rick. Rick checked in. Hey, where are the crotch shots? Turn it off. Turn it off. And how do I get an ant out of my pants? <laughs> Very good, people. You're you're doing a fine job. Give out that website again. 
Okay, you can go to uh, www.geocities.com slash sugar and spice pageant. That's it. That's it. Yeah. Someone's got to print out all these uh, messages before they delete them and put them on soundrymusic.com. Very funny. Let's go to Dina. Dina, what's up? Hi, guys. Hey. Um, I just wanted to call and, and tell you that, you know, the gentleman that called in before and was telling you about the pituitary gland yeah. um, does have something to do with sex drive. I'm not sure exactly. I mean, I, I don't have the material in front of me, but I remember looking it up recently for a friend who has a condition. Uh -huh. There is a connection. In fact, the pituitary gland um, does control the, the hormones, certain hormones that are connected to sex drive. For instance, uh, prolactin is one of the hormones that the pituitary gland will control the, grow, the production of. Well, I'll tell you what. That guy, uh, yeah? he sure wasn't serious. Oh, okay. <laughs> Well, I just, you know, when you said that, I thought, I, I just remembered looking at it. And I'm sure any gland uh, would produce some kind of hormones that have to do with sex, you know. It's like okay. a mix and match kind of thing. But you may the, be right, yeah. But, the pitu That's... but him saying he has orgasms through his pituitary gland I is can, like, yeah. get out of here. I don't know where that came from. I really don't. Jack hole. All right, Dina. Uh, yeah, possibly. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Ron. What's up, guys? Hey. What's up? Listen, I'm a nurse. I, uh, I used to co-facilitate for this prostate cancer support group, and I used to have about 20 of these old men with prostate cancer, the funniest guys you'll ever meet. Oh, yeah? You used to come in and be like, uh, yeah, the doctor used to take their finger and stick it up my A. <laughs> and, uh, you know, that's when he told me I had prostate cancer, something like that. Yeah? All right. NurseAgent.com. Yeah. Oh, uh, there he goes. He puts out a little website. Okay. They probably dumped out of half his conversation anyway. I know. Frank, what's going on? Yeah, I had uh, Virgil's veins on my testicles three uh, years ago. Uh, Plus, I had testicular cancer a few years uh, ago. Hold on. Uh, hold it. Hold it. I'm cringing. Wait a minute. It, Ver Vericose veins on oh. your on your uh, yam bag? Yeah, they, they cut it. Now, they uh, apparently, they cut through it differently. But uh, what they did at that time, they cut it open. Uh, and I had... Oh. My my balls oh. were like balls. I mean, big. Your balls are showing. I had to I had to walk sideways, you know, with one leg furrow out, you know. I hate this place. Oh, yes. But uh, the implants uh, at that time. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Were they were they removed? What's that? Uh, well, you know, your uh, you know what? Oh well, yeah, one was removed. Yeah. I thought I told you to shut up. Yeah, it's freaking out. So one was removed. All right, and you're in, are you impotent? No, no, that was just temporary. But uh, you know, with the sex drive, but we're talking about Giuliani, uh -huh. uh, it, it happens. I mean, there's no desire. You have no. You don't even think about it. No desire. No desire. <laughs> All right, Frank. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Bye. One more on this. We're going nowhere. We're trying uh, to get right. to the bottom. Pat. Hey, how you doing? All right. Pat. Please. Here's the problem, right? Yeah. This is the real deal. I uh, didn't have any sexual relations for three years, and during that time, I gained about 100 pounds just from eating, and I wasn't dating. I met a girl. We went to fool around. Your brain says you're into it. You feel into it, and you're fooling around. Next thing you know, you uh, you know, you explode down there, but you never get fully erect, and that's the problem you have. You can take Viagra for it and stuff. For some people, it's weight. And when you gain too much weight, you don't even know it, and it's frustrating beyond belief. Because you can see a hot girl, and you can be like, "Oh man, what I want to do to her and stuff," but it's just like it's just not working, you know. So you still get all the feelings. You get the feeling in your head. You get like, "Oh my god, oh my god," and you can actually just explode down there, and you're like, "Oh my god, I exploded!" And I didn't even, you know, get uh, full attention. I wonder how much of and I, you go to the doctor and he tells you it's weight. You know you can lose weight to fix that, but they give you on that Viagra. Same thing. The Viagra doesn't. That only makes you explode. It doesn't make you, uh, you know, full right, attention. Right right, 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 right. We got it. So you feel the same way. You see a girl. You know, I'm in 28, and I'm like, oh man, what I want to do with her. And then you just like, but you can't do you it. You think everything's working, and they're the ones to tell you it doesn't. And that's when you're like, oh man. You got the whiskey D. Oh, yeah, exactly. All right, Pat. Thank you. You got it. Bye. Jesus, that's awful. And the mayor, there he is, can't do anything. So he has the feeling, the, like the urges, but he doesn't have the ability. Well, good. 
I'm glad. <laughs> Poor bastard. And not only that, then he's got an ex-wife or a future ex-wife that's just ragging his ass all the time. In the house, won't leave. Be, 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 be. It's got to be just a nightmare. Ah, oh, <laughs> complete nightmare. All right. Let's take a break. All righty. How, how many? Can we, oh, ten pairs. Nice. We'll clear the phone, Stink, if you're listening. And uh, we'll give out some tickets to an exclusive listening party for the new Radiohead CD. That's happening at Lux in Levittown, uh, a, a good club, by the way, on Long Island. The listening party is this Friday, plus all winners will be entered into a drawing to win tickets to see Radiohead when they come to the tri-state area. This summer, the new CD by Radiohead will be in stores on June 5th, but you can listen to it this coming Friday. We got ten of these. It's gonna be a nice little time, and we'll give them to ten random callers. Two one two seven five seven one zero two seven. Opie Anthony. They talk so fast. I can't make out all the dirty words. What is this? One zero two seven. W N E W. Anthony Paisano of Mulberry Street in the heart of Little Italy. Mm -mm 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 -mm. I love Paisanos. Let me tell you something. Yeah, I made a uh, an error. What'd you do? I was hanging with Brother Louise this Saturday. He did his uh, radio show live from New York. Yeah. We had a good time. Usually we go to Paisano. Yeah. After the, the Weed show. Uh, it's a no-brainer. We really didn't want to, like, you know, take the long ride down to Little Italy. And oh, stuff. what did you do? We went to this joint right around the corner, and it blew. God, did it blow. Can I change my Who's Gonna Get Whacked uh, names for our contest that we have for the Sopranos that we did earlier? I got Artie Bucco and uh, the Russian Mob guy. Yeah. Uh, I want Opie. I said I screwed up. Can I get Opie? But we didn't get off the air till ten, and then cab. It was we had like twelve people. So oh I boy! Gotta get three or four cabs, or we jump in the sun. It was just a mess. So, mm -hmm. so someone suggested why don't we just eat around here? And it turns out we we went to one of these new joints that just opened. The guy was miserable. Good, good. We show up at ten thirty. It was obvious the guy wanted to go home. There was like two couples finishing up dinner. Yeah, treated us like crap. He's pouring the water on, on one of the one of the guy's arms. What do you want? Just go down to Paisano. It's right there in the heart I of Little Italy. I said I screwed up. Well, you take it up with uh, Joey. You don't take that up with me. I'm asking for his forgiveness. Yeah, well, all right. Hope for your sake he forgives. All right. Opie, I want Italian food tonight. You know where I'm going. Paisano of Mulberry Street. Are you really going to that? Yes. Nice. Authentic Italian cuisine made from old world recipes and price right. Great service, too. They'll treat you like a king down there. The portions are huge, so you take some home. And they got incredible pasta lunch specials. Ask for Joey, the owner. Wait, wait, let me get this straight. So, yeah. so if I go there tonight, yeah. I will see you yeah. eating the fried ravioli? Absolutely. Look at I'm you. I'm right there. And the veal chop? Yeah. I think we're going to have that. Where will you be sitting? I don't know, probably the usual table. What about on the sidewalk? It's, you know, it's, well, it's kind of chilly tonight. Yeah, I don't know. We're getting ripped off for spring here. Who? I don't understand it. Ask for Joey, the owner. You get a glass of wine on the house. Joey better be there. You know, Joey's got a problem with you now for not going to the restaurant? He doesn't have a problem. I got, well, no, he's got a problem. No, I, I got a problem with Joey. Let me just, I'm putting it right out there right now. What's your problem with Joey? I got a beef with Joey. Hmm. That he's never there anymore. The guy, I go down there all the time, and I never see him down there. I got to talk to his cronies. I want to talk to the boss. I'm smart. He doesn't have to be there to run the operation, Anthony. I know. They know how to run it, but occasionally you want to sit down with the boss. And that's Joey. What, Rick? You're up top. You don't know, Rick. You're Puerto Rican. Paisano of Mulberry Street in the heart of Little Italy, yeah. 136 He's Mulberry. Spanish. Oh, is that what you're trying this week? <laughs> I'm Nordic. No, just a dick. Call 965-1188. 965-1188. Remember that number. Make reservations. They're open seven days a week. Weekends still two. Paisano of Mulberry Street. Hour, 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 hour. By Opie and Anthony. All, all, all owned by Infinity Broadcasting. This is 1027 WNEW. Playing with the Deftones this summer, late summer at PNC and Jones Beach. We have tickets for both those shows to give away. Not today, though. Oh, big? I want to back. Oh, you had something? Go ahead. Just quickly, I, I have congratulations in order for my pal, Adam Ferrara and Dennis Leary. And? Huh? Lenny Clark. Lenny Clark, too, of course. Of the show now. 
the show of the job, the mid-season replacement of a few months back. Remember? Remember? Mm -hmm. You might remember. Mm -hmm. Picked up for the schedule. That's right. Following uh, Drew Carey at 9.30 on Wednesday nights, you will be seeing the job. That's so cool. Yeah, look at that. My pal's in a real show. Full season and, and everything. Yeah. Nice. He's on a hit, believe me. Nah, that rocks. Oh, that's really good. So congratulations to uh, everyone involved in the show. And, of course, Adam, my yes. pal. Yes, there you have it. Shoot. I want to back up uh, Channel 2 News, another killer tease. What What, what did they do? If you were listening to the commercials a couple minutes ago, they said, uh, see what New York restaurants are failing health inspections tonight at 11. Can we eat and you shut up? Can we eat? Oh, how many people are on their way to a restaurant in Manhattan right now? I know. And these bastards at uh, Channel 2? Yeah. They're not telling us what restaurants we should avoid oh, until 11 o'clock tonight. Mm -hmm. So someone, you might go out someone and you won't know. Someone could die from food poisoning tonight because they didn't know. And they're holding back this info just to get ratings yeah. on Channel 2 tonight at 11. So you tune in. Oh, and you know something? You're not doing anyone any favors because a lot of these people are in... In uh, you know, uh, in cabs and uh, mm -hmm. and in cars and on the train with their walkman on, and they're not helping. They're not helping. They're going to restaurants right now. Someone could die. You know what happens too with these news reports? They go into restaurants and they uh, look for E. coli and other kind of bacteria that uh, that hurt people. You know, the publicized ones that everyone knows about. And they scrape the bottom of a chafing dish or something, and, or one of those big. Uh, Tin things that food goes in, and they go, oh, look what we found, some E. coli. But you can find E. coli anywhere. They just try to scare you. you They're doing what? a good job. You know what? I think my brother's away. He's in the business. Yeah. We could do a, a whole segment on this with my brother, and we could easily get ten to 20,000 people to never eat in a restaurant again. Oh, don't do that. He's told me, he's told me things that I'm going out tonight. First off, he goes, never, ever, 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 ever eat the bread. Ever. Well, because, you know, when they bring the bread over, yeah. whatever's not eating, they just throw back into the bread bin and they just pick out the, the best-looking pieces for the next guy. No. <laughs> Swear to God. No. Swear to God. I want big bread. Well, I'm folding it. <laughs> you could be a real a-hole. Let's say you go to a restaurant, okay? Yeah. You could be a... You could just... I'll just You could just pick your nose and put it all over the bread. Yeah. And, and make it look like you didn't even touch it. They will. They will reserve that bread. Well, anywhere I go, I ask for fresh bread. Oh, that that'll take then care. Then they of wipe that. it on their genitals. That'll take and care bring of it back. Mm -hmm. I say I'm with the health department. I would like fresh bread and a bribe. Why is Chamberlain saying we're being tools about this uh, food thing? No boogers, please. Chamberlain. Hey. 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 The commercial just came on for Channel 2 News. Yeah. About what's in your food. All right. Now, Anthony somehow had a brain freeze. Like, he, did, he really didn't listen to that commercial at all, did he? No. You got to sequence it a little better, you know? What? You, you can't cut it that thing. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Chamberlain, explain. We're giving you the chance. Did we screwed what up? What I'm saying is, is the commercial was just on. You guys hear the commercials. But give it 10 minutes before you start talking about it, like, Anthony's like, Oh, what are you talking about? Oh, really? I wasn't oh, really? I wasn't listening to the commercials, and I still don't know what the F you're talking on. about. Explain. I, 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 it just, I don't know. It sounded cheesy. The commercial just came on, and all right, it was all okay. I, 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 I'm a troll. No, 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 you trying to make, wait, no, are you no, trying to I, say I, that? I got it. I got it. Okay, why? I got it. Why? Because I brought up the food thing, because, yeah, the commercial just played, and I heard it in the background. Yeah. Okay? So I brought it up to you, and you're like, oh, really? Because you're really hearing it for the first time. Oh, did you think we're faking uh, it? Yeah. No. Oh, Dude, you couldn't be more wrong. I swear I was not paying attention to the commercial. Right, come on. All right. All right. I want you to have to this time, but the next oh, time you do it, I'm going to test you. What do you think? It's like one of those things where Opie goes, hey, did you hear that spot? No, Opie, why don't you tell me about it? Yeah, we talk about our setups during commercials. It, I, this is how it came about. I just I put my headphones on early, and I heard the last, I don't know, 10, 15 seconds of that commercial, I said, ooh, let's bring this up on the air. You obviously did not hear the commercial. Because so I was said, reading the thing Anthony, on the job. Right. I go, Anthony, can we go back? Because I just heard something. and Because and it's something we've been doing on the show lately, these killer teases that the news stations do. And I had no idea I was what bringing that up. What a dick. What a dick. 
See, now all the chefs are calling. We don't even have to go there because we're going to just spoil everyone's dinner tonight. Yes, please. Don't do that. All right. Um, I guess that's the last we'll hear of Adam Ferrara from down from Hoboken. <laughs> I'm hoping he still stays a uh, pal. Hmm. The Robert Blake thing, Anthony. Yeah. Yes. Yes, Robert Blake. Boy, this story gets better and better. You're following this story very closely. You've been on top of this since the beginning. Yes, Opie. Um, I thought it sounded a little suspicious right from the get-go. New theory. Yeah. I said uh, as soon as the news broke that it was a hitman, no doubt, mm -hmm. hired by Robert Blake. Yeah. Now I think Robert Blake did oh. it. Oh. Really? And I was, show I was telling you, <laughs> someone's going to laugh at it. I mean, but that's fine. That's why we, we talk out of our A's. Yeah. I said that he lined up the shot, yeah, snuck back out to the car, lined up the shot, uh -huh. and kind of twisted his hand around so no gunpowder would get on it. Mm. Now you're going to say the gunpowder on his hand. Okay, glove. But nowhere so he's else. wearing a glove and a black. You know, you need a big glove. People that, that shoot, they get uh, residue, gunpowder residue, over their whole body. Like you could pick it what up. What if on you're their shooting leg. around the corner though? Your hands it's just kind of like this. It doesn't matter if you ever watched a slow motion night shot of a shot being fired. That blast goes everywhere. It's amazing. There you go. It really is. So it could, it could still get on him. Right, I'm so asleep. I don't know about that, but they have found a gun. That's right. Police found the gun they believe was used to kill Blake's wife in a trash bin a block and a half away from the restaurant that the shooting took place. Uh, there was still one bullet in the gun. Two shots were fired into her uh, head. And the gun, described as a Walther pistol, described uh, as a collector's item. And um, Robert Blake, a gun collector. They also found a box of uh, the same type of ammunition with three bullets missing out of the box. Oh, one bullet was found in the gun, two found in her head. But ask OJ, that, that's not enough. But now they're saying also that the casings of the ammo, which is very popular am ammunition, the casings were a little different mm. than the ones in the gun. But I, I, who knows? Maybe he, you know, because a lot of people, you, you get the type of ammo, you get new ammo, and as you use it, you might combine two boxes. You know what I mean? You kind of fill up your other box so you could throw away the box and have used ammo. So it doesn't really... I don't know. It's looking more and more like Robert Blake may be uh, responsible for this or have something to do with it. And, uh, and a waiter saying that he didn't come in for the gun or another or, thing? Or, or it didn't look like he was coming in for a gun? The alibi. Blake's alibi that he went back to the restaurant to retrieve the pistol, contradicted by a busboy who told police, that guy must speak English. No, he told <laughs> police uh, he cleared the table with a couple eight before the actor returned and found no gun. And his whole alibi is, Hey, I wasn't there when she got shot because I came in here to get my gun. He's a gun collector. He's had guns for years, but somehow he dropped it on the floor or put it on the table and forgot it. So have not have any of the tests come back to see if there's anything on his uh, clothing or stuff? Yeah, they said they had no gunpowder residue on his hands. I don't know about clothing or anything. They haven't said. They just said his hands. He was too shaken up to um, take a lie detector test. Well, that's. And they went into his house, and uh, where's this part of the story? Let's see. They went into the house to uh, to search it, to get tapes and files and whatnot. And they said his house was ransacked, like kind of a mess. And on the walls were painted something like, um, they're not going to get me for this, or I'm not going down for this. <sighs> like he painted stuff on the walls. He's a little kooky. Just a little kooky. He's a lot kooky. Sean. Hey, guys. Listen, uh, the, phone, the, uh, the gun I found, the Walter PPK, is the same gun that 007 uses in the movies. Oh, yeah? yeah I'm right. just wondering if Blake was wearing a tuxedo that night. Maybe he was in character. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> was, it, was, the, was, the, was the car in Austin Healy? <laughs> Look at you with obscure references. Very I'm nice. I'm sorry. Take right. care, guys. You suck. That's good, Sean. Though. John's, uh, our, uh, Blake's uh, close friend, this guy John Solari, said that... Um, he was very embarrassed when he discovered that this chick was sending out old nude photos of herself to other men because she was doing it. She was doing phone sex, sending old men pictures of her naked so they'd send her money. This is how she got money. She built a lot of people. 
Um, so this Solari guy offered to kill this woman. To Blake said, "I'll kill her," and Robert Blake said, "No, no, uh, I can't. I can't do this. Uh, I got to make this work." And he said, "No, Robert, I'll take her off the count." <laughs> it's like a Beretta episode. Hey, don't go taking her off the count. They're not going to pin this on me. He begged me and said, John, John, don't ever do that. I got to make this work because of my daughter. I don't want her to grow up and uh, know this happened. So, the, I mean, it's been out there already that there were such problems that this Robert Blake guy told his friend that he was having such problems with this girl that the friend offered to kill her. So, uh, maybe Robert Blake said, hey, let me take matters into my own hands. Well, we have a New Jersey PI on the phone, Rich. Uh, Rich? Hey, guys. How are hey, you? Hey. I'll be short and sweet. When you, when you offer too much information, it's out of nerves. Right. Something's on his mind. And he's enveloping too much conversation and too much information to try to make him innocent. He's as guilty as sin. Yeah, that's always the worst thing you can do is uh, and, and try, to, if, try to come and, out against the girl, too. And that's what they've done, like the Blake's lawyers have just been bashing this chick. Right, and and when you have, uh, you don't put a gun on a table like you put a phone on a table. If you have a gun, you can feel it. You put it in like a leather holster around your ankle. Yeah, you don't just plop it on the table. Yeah, it's just, uh, it's too much thing, too much information there that uh, that he's revealing. And plus the fact, I believe his lawyer is filling his guts about his, his, his wife because he feels maybe because if it goes to the courts, he won't be able to bash his wife's end. So they're trying to get it all out now to make his wife a bad person. Yeah, get it out in the press. Right, because if, if it does go to court, it does go to trial, the judge will never allow him to do that. Mm -hmm. So I think that's what the motivation is here. I mean, how could you possibly trash a woman the day after she's been killed? Yeah, you know, you're so broken up about it, yet your lawyer comes out and starts bashing... And he has nothing to say about it. He doesn't turn around and tell his lawyer, what are you, insane? Stop doing that. No, because day after day, the lawyer came out and started bashing this woman. Yeah, it, it is. Mm -hmm. uh, it, I, I don't know when it's going to come out. I don't know when they're going to try to find something. So to get this limit, Bull. I, <laughs> I know for sure that the police out there know that he is he's guilty. They're just looking for a reason to, uh, they're looking for something to book him on. Oh, yeah. They just yeah. need that little piece of key evidence, and then it's over, Johnny. He's going. Yeah. All right, Rich. Foolish. Take it easy. Thank you. Bye bye. It's all completely explainable. I don't see what the big fuss is all about. He's a collector of guns. So he brought one to the restaurant and dropped it. The bus boy threw it away, and that's how it ended up in the dumpster. I am a knife collector. I don't see the problem there. Nicole fell on my knife collection multiple times. We have audio of this lady? Yeah. What's the first one? cookie woman? I'm a pool collector. <laughs> I love them. Heart shit, kidney, I don't care. Heated, not heated. They could drown a wife like, oh, I mean, if I could swim in them. <laughs> the, the first one is, uh, I believe, where she's talking about uh, having her fake IDs and how it's her business. Hmm. Yeah, she would have fake IDs and steal right. people's identity. Oh, okay. So she, can, oh. so she can, you know, hook up with men. She was definitely into, like, some shady stuff. Yeah, I know. I got three years probation just for having different IDs, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and it wasn't even like I was really used them for anything totally, you know, totally. due to a legal either, you know. <laughs> I mean, it's my business, and if I want to, um, you know, like, fool guys in the mail and say that I'm somebody else, you know, what's the difference? For money? No, it, it is a crime. <laughs> I mean, you can't, you can't do that. What? <laughs> It's my business. I didn't do things too, too illegal. This is this is legal, isn't it? Oh, I think that would piss off your husband a little bit, though. Oh, give him a reason to uh, shoot you in the head. <laughs> shoot you in the head. What's the second clip? The second clip, I'm not sure, but I know the third clip. Uh, the second one's quick anyway, so let's take a listen. Even if I was to admit and say, okay, well, I no, I, I didn't take the pill. I told him I was didn't take the pill, and I didn't take it at that at that day. That's, uh, uh, she's having a conversation, obviously, with somebody about uh, tricking an actor into uh, getting her pregnant. Shut up, Rummy. Oops. Throw the gun. Take the cannoli. And what's the third clip? And the third clip of her is of her uh, talking some more. Oh, 
just forgot what it was about. Ah, uh, it'll be obvious. Yeah. I was the kid in, that everybody hated in school because I was, like, mm-hmm. poor and couldn't dress good, and, you know, and everybody always made fun of me because I was, like, real loner type, you know. So then you grow up um, saying, oh, I'll fix them, I'll show them, I'll be a movie star, you know. <laughs> Um, and it was too hard because I was always falling for somebody. So I figured, well, why not fall for movie stars and, instead of becoming one, you know? Oh. Oh, I mean, let's face it. Uh, she, ju- she jumped on Dean Martin's peg. Yeah. <laughs> Terry, Lu- Terry Lee Lewis's peg. The, 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 you know, Christian Brando's peg, it looks like. The world isn't losing uh, Dean Martin. Nobel Prize winner here, believe me. Dean Martin's limp peg. Oh. Oh. Uh, you know, it's not a, a huge uh, tragedy to the country that this one uh, bought the dust. She, she seems like a real uh, flake and a real uh, shyster. But as far as who did it, I'm kind of leaning towards uh, Robert Blake. <laughs> Steve. <laughs> so is Steve. He's got a gun power, uh, gunpowder theory. Ah, Steve. Hey, guys. Hey. They love the show. Look, I know a lot of guys down in the city that uh, carry what they call a throwaway. Right. And what they'll do is they'll stuff it in a plastic bag after they use it. I mean, uh, that obviously would take care of some of the gunpowder, and then they just dump the dump the uh, empty shell and the gun out and get rid of the bag. There's a, just a theory for you. What, they put it in a plastic bag and shoot it that way? Yeah, so they mm-hmm. don't leave any prints on the gun. It's mm-hmm. not going to leave any residue from, uh, you know, from the blast. Hmm, interesting. And you don't blow, you ain't find it? I don't know. I, I, I think he's involved. I definitely think he knew she was going to die that night, right then and there. Yeah, I can't wait for the whole story to come out. There's another OJ thing. We're all going to be watching Court TV. All right, Steve. All right, guys. Thank you. Thanks. And, and, you know, it just happened, and then the real killer, let's call him, <laughs> disappears. Like, it's so, there's no trail, there's no nothing, there's no suspects except for Robert Blake. When it comes down like that, because the, the Nicole thing, there was no, we're looking for this person, or we're looking for a description of this, that. No, you were looking for OJ. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> and then with this, it's the same thing. They're not saying, we're looking for a late model this, or we're looking for a guy that fits this description. There's nobody. There's Robert Blake. So uh, I, it doesn't look good for Beretta. But I'm sure Nick at Night or something's going to bring back the old series so we can all enjoy it. That's what they always do. Remember with the OJ trial, all you'd see is him as Nordberg going down the stairs with the big stadium in the wheelchair with the big afro trying to fit through the door. You know. In between watching him on court TV, you're like, hey, that's the funny OJ. There he goes. So you're going to be seeing him with the cockatoo on his shoulder talking to that old rummy. The goof throwing towering inferno back on the tube. <laughs> the OJ. The OJ. Yeah, well, Godspeed there, uh, Robert Blake. Good luck. Hey, this is Dennis Leary, and you know what? You will never hear me on the Opie and Anthony show on 102.7 WNEW. That's a guarantee. If you hear somebody claiming to be me, it's probably Willem Dafoe, not me. I wouldn't do the show. Anthony, New York Sports Clubs. Yes, Opie. New I, York Sports Clubs. I'm working at, out at uh, New York Sports Clubs now. Oh, yeah? Solved my little problem, and now i got a membership, and I'm very, 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 very happy. Like the equipment? I uh, love the equipment. Nice. State, state of the art equipment at New York Sports Clubs. You gotta wait to get on it. Ah, uh, no, 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 cool. No, cool. They, they got so much equipment that yeah, that's 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 something that's important. You, you don't it have, is. You don't have to wait as long. Mm-hmm. They got tons of cardio machines, state of the art cardio machines where you, you get, on some of them you can check out the internet while you're working out. That's good. See, then time flies by. You don't even realize you're working out. It, it's great. Very very happy. The thing about New York Sports Clubs that we can tell people they're everywhere. Yeah, I got something called. Uh, uh, I think it's called a passport. Passport, passport right, Rick? I got that too. You got the passport? It's awesome. It really is awesome because most people, they join their local gym in their town, mm-hmm. you know, but maybe you're away on business or you're in the city or this and that. I can work out like at o- over 70 gyms. Yeah, so it's not like a lot of people try to choose, should I get the gym near my work or my house? And then you get it by your house and it's like, huh, this would have been convenient. I get off of work. I could have yeah. gone. But now I'm, I'm, I'm out of luck. Yeah, with New York sports clubs, I work, uh, I work out near home and I work out near work. Nice, very nice. Yes, I mean you've seen the the, the New York sports clubs for yourself. You can't walk a block without seeing one. They're they're everywhere. all over. They're taking over and they're they're really doing uh doing it right without a doubt. Yeah. New York sports sports clubs uh, they have a better way, a stress free way. Call one eight hundred three zero one one two three one. That's one eight hundred three zero one 
one, two, three, one. At New York Sports Clubs, you'll also find tons of exercise equipment and amazing exercise classes like cycling, boxing, cultural dance, p body pump, and yoga. That's right. I forgot about that. Yeah. They offer all these classes. So, you know, if you want to do something a little different and join a class to get in shape, that's, that's something you can do as well, okay? No better time to join than now. It's New York Sports Clubs. They're in your neighborhood, so give them a call, 1-800-301-1231. This year, make your fitness resolution work at New York Sports Clubs. Ready? Three, two, one. I found out why the government is actually behind the glow in the dark monkey. Why? Uh, because they figure it'll be easier to spot your television leaving your apartment at 3 o'clock in the morning. Oh, oh three, yeah, day. Sorry about that, kid. Take down. 1027-WNEW. It's time to play What Did We Learn on the ONA Show today. Educational. Couldn't talk about the hookers thing. It ran out of time. Uh, no. Basically, because of Rudy cleaning up the streets, you don't see many uh, hookers walking around Midtown. Street walkers. Street walkers, sure. So um, they're uh, riding around in cars themselves. <laughs> now, they drive in the car. It used to be they would stand on the corner. You drive by. You go, hey. They go, hey, baby, you want a date? And then uh, they'd hop in. You'd haggle a little over price, try to feel out if it's a cop. They get in the car. Uh, you find out they're a transvestite and get embarrassed in front of your friends and family. Then you got to go and... What? <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> I was listening. <laughs> no, and then all of a sudden, uh, that's how it was done. It happened to Ben once. That was a hooker, but whatever. Hey, man, that's man. Okay. But now, yeah, they've switched roles. Now the hookers are in the cars, driving around and uh, just asking the guys, you need a date, you, you want a date, day. and then you jump in for a little fun, and they'll even take you to your favorite hotel, whatever you want to do. It's got to make it a little harder for the cops, because uh, the way it was with them walking, you'd ask them, if you were a cop or something, and the hooker gets in your car, there, now the hooker's in your car. If you're a cop and you drive up and the hooker's on the street and she says something, you give the little thing, you toot your horn, you flash your light, then the cops come and nail her on the sidewalk. Now, if you get into that car, she's at the wheel. You're in the passenger seat. Even if you're a cop, kind of puts you in a weird position. It's a little more dangerous. And they're driving really nice cars. Yeah. They got sunroofs and stuff so you can look right in and check out her body. Pimp Daddy's been uh, fastened up. So we should try to get one of these hookers on the line. Oh, yeah. He'll talk. Oh, yeah? I think we could get one that'll talk. Where are the hookers cruising these days? Right up, right outside our building. The story. Right in Midtown. What was it? The Daily News of the Post. They did a whole story on it today, and it turned out it was the Sheridan uh, a couple blocks down on Saturday. Oh, my God, really? And they had talked to the one girl picked up, uh, I think it was the reporter doing the story. That's always cute. Man, that, that guy, that's just an alibi. No, yeah. seriously, I was writing a story for the Daily News. Yeah, you really didn't even have a story to write. Oh, yeah. my God, I was doing something on housekeeping in hotels. Right. Oh, no. No, honey, I swear I'm doing a story on hookers. The guy probably got caught picking up one of these girls and said, Oh, my God, thank God I'm a writer for the Daily News. I'll just make believe I've been, uh, you know, following this story for months. I'm going to do this story. Right. Oh. Douglas Montero, you're not fooling anyone. I'm going to shelve the story on the bacteria in hotel beds. Right. Probably got arrested. He Horror the in the hotel rooms. Damn, i got to put that off. He, told, he, he got arrested and told the cops, come on, man, you're blowing my cover. I've been working on this story. It's mm. coming out tomorrow. <laughs> she just writes an article really fast. Throw yeah. it together. For the love of God, please print this so I don't get screwed. Uh, let's see. Yeah, the hookers. I thought the guy in the story that came out of the bar hammered and he thought the chick was just talking to him because he was a good looking guy or whatever. Yeah. You know what they do? They said they, they line up outside the strip clubs. You know yeah. what strip club they're talking about? Oh, yeah, we know that one. <laughs> oh, come on, the only one left in Times Square. <laughs> Probably like flash dancers. Of course. Or something. Come on. Right on 7th Ave. They're all just lined up. The guys, they get the bars closed, they're hammered. They got the hotels ready because it's Midtown. They're all over the place, and uh, there you go. Samantha 20 said, uh, the cops tell us don't walk the streets, get in your car and go. That's what they're doing. They, uh, the cops don't really bother you as much in the car. For, to the naked eye, Samantha looked like a spoiled rich kid looking for trouble in Dad's car when she pulled up alongside me at 4 a.m. near the Sheridan. This is Douglas, the writer. It happened. Her He's doing his research at four in the morning. Her fresh smile can make an ugly fat man feel cute. <laughs> you want to hang out, Samantha said, as the light changed and the car behind her began honking. She told me, uh, 
to cross 7th Avenue, where she pulled her 2000 Mustang convertible over on 53rd. Sexy yet firm. Sexy yet firm? Sexy yet firm. That doesn't make sense. Samantha was strictly business, running the tips of her fingernails up her thigh while telling me it will cost 200 for her body. Hell, hookers like Samantha usually target midtown uh, tourists who already have hotel rooms. She offered a $60 a night 10th Avenue hotel. Uh, oh, my God, she was willing to drive me there or follow behind my car or a cab, whatever uh, location I felt relaxed at. They're hell hookers, they're calling them. <whistles> Hooker! Jesus. <laughs> Check this out. <laughs> The desperate men are easy to spot. Greg, a 40-year-old school teacher, remembers stumbling out of a Midtown bar at 3 a.m. recently when a gorgeous woman in a fancy sports car pulled alongside of him at 56th and 7th Avenue. <laughs> These hookers are all around us. <laughs> They're right outside our building in these cars. <laughs> she smiled. He smiled back. She handed Greg a business card with the words Dream Travel printed in bold letters. If you want to play, give me a call, the woman said as she drove off. Greg thought he picked up a travel agent until he examined the card closely. A travel agent. And he read the card cool. for the trip of your dreams and realized the woman was a hooker. It's better, Greg said. You don't feel like it's going to be sleazy. You know, you know, like you're picking up a whore in the street. It's a woman in a sports car. You feel this is going to be better. Another story that, uh, that a guy gave his wife. <laughs> What's this card? I thought it was a travel agent. <laughs> Thought it was a travel, dream travel. We're going to Bermuda, me and you. Huh, I was going to book a cruise. And she started sucking. <laughs> <laughs> sucking and effing. So now I blew on travel money. <laughs> <laughs> What's the, what, what does the light on top of the, on top of the car say when she's done? Off booty? <laughs> no! <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Dan from Hoboken. This is a call back from the first break of the show. I learned the girl that uh, recognized Stinky on the street today was a hooker. <laughs> Hi, this is Joe Torrey. Remember, unzip your fly and get ready for the best BJ of your life. Remember, always wear your seatbelt. Hi, if you enjoyed your ride, remember, pay up now. And uh, it's the Yankee Skipper. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't that be great, you hell of a... Greg, what's going on? Hi, this is Joan Ribbons. Remember, <laughs> don't, get any, don't get any junk all over your pant leg when you go home. Just to help for you, too. <laughs> all right, remember, wipe up with a Kleenex and we'll see you at the stadium. <laughs> Hi, this is Rudy Giuliani. I can't get some, but that doesn't mean you can't. Hell, <laughs> hey, look, I, oh, geez. they have this blue guard on the uh, front. <laughs> they make sure. Not for robbery, you got to protect the driver's head. Oh, man. Hey, Greg, what's up? <laughs> Greg. Yeah. It's hey, you. You're live. Okay, well, that ain't my real name, but uh, I have uh, met a couple of these uh, ladies here. One was driving around like a Lexus SUV, man. It was great. Yeah, they're driving like really new, nice vehicles. Yeah, because I don't know if it's there. It's probably the pimp. No, it's the pimp. That's all. I mean, yeah, like that makes you feel better about it. If she drove up in a, you know, a, a skank car. <laughs> that's true. You know, but if they got the nice SUV or you know, a real fancy car or convertible. Yeah, nice, yeah. relaxing. There you have it. <laughs> all right, all right, Craig. Else. Thank you. All right, man. Thanks. Bye. That is something else. And remember to get your receipt. When you leave the vehicle, don't slip on your own sploot. <laughs> Angelo from the Bronx. Today I learned that Ron Fez's motto is keep him guessing. I also learned that Rudy G is a crumpet muncher. <laughs> I learned that Nicole died from falling on OJ's knife collection multiple times. And I also learned that Mr. Tim is running a kid touching empire. There we go. I learned Earl knows how Rudy G feels. Anthony from West Orange. Mm. I learned that uh, 007 killed Robert Blake's wife. And they, we don't really have time to play this. No. That's okay. No. We had a good uh, good time today. But today I learned that Opie's neighbor has a crime scene mattress. <laughs> this is pretty funny. Uh, some guy from Brooklyn. Oh, Jizzervoir. Okay. Good yeah. name. Today I learned Opie saw Norton's hog. I guess they're friends now. Tonight on Fox, whores behind the wheel. Can't wait to see that story. What the hell are they waiting for?
I'd watch that news story. Tease that one. Hookers in Lexus in Midtown. Where can you find them? <laughs> Join us. We'll tell you in 11 where you can pick up a hooker. Can we say firm yet sexy? Give me that story, Ant. We got to call this uh, this writer from the Daily News. Yeah, I want some more info. We got to get him more. Oh, it's the Post? I'm sorry, the Post. Getting in a car can get you laid. Tune in. Fox 5 to at 11. Find out where the hot spots are to get your junk hoovered. <laughs> Tuttle from New York. Yeah. Today I learned there's an ugly fat writer for the Post doing research at 4 a.m. 4 a.m. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> That sounds like such an excuse. I was leaving the Sheridan at 4 in the morning when all of a sudden... <laughs> God, I, I just got a great idea. I got to get a job for the post. Mm -hmm. You it's can never get in trouble. Built-in alibi. Whatever you're doing you is You can never get in trouble with your wife or girlfriend because you get caught doing anything. No, honey, I'm writing a story. I couldn't tell you about it because I'm undercover. It's a story. All right, uh, before we go, once again, I want to congratulate Kelly, the whipped cream bikini champion. Yes. She's got the trip to Hawaii, courtesy of Kantiki Tours. You're not going to play the song for her? <laughs> uh, yeah, we could. Celia, Celia comes in second place. She's got a long weekend at Laurel Bay Inn in Ocean City, New Jersey. Nice. And third place went to Jesse. She's got a gift certificate to spend uh, on uh, whipped, cream, whipped cream bikini com. Anthony. Lovely. We'll send this out to Kelly as we... As we leave you <laughs> on this fine Monday. Hey, guys, thanks for listening today. Yes. We'll see you tomorrow.